ladies and gentlemen, the funny, the talent, the the good looking, the just, dime piece, just doubled up. In we here. call him the dime piece. Well, if you thought, if you <laughs> we thought call the, the show, white unicorn. That's right. If you thought the show was athletic and good looking before, it it just it just jumped up fifty percent. We just got, one up this bitch. We got Mike Stud up in this bitch. I'm blushing. And, and Mike's one of the only guys we've had who Fifty Cent, yep. Conor McGregor. I say yep. Fifty Cent, F- Conor Fitty, McGregor. Fitty. I mean the who's who. And you're the first guy I told our publicist and Booker, reach out to this dude. That's yeah. She was like, really? I'm like, yeah, reach out well, to this guy. Well, you're a fan of the music. And I was listening and I was like, this guy who was an all American pitcher, all American high school you, and college. You, you didn't know, right? No. And I'm like, dude, I'm telling you he's going to be a good guest because we would have to sell each other on guests. Sometimes right, right, I'm bringing right. a guy, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah, man, the, the, the way I discovered Mike was I was in camp, I think, for. Mitrione or Andre Orlovsky, and I'm just in the middle of this grind session, running the Santa Monica stairs like an asshole <laughs> at like midnight because mm-hmm. I couldn't sleep. I remember that. So I'm running. Yeah, I sent you that yeah, picture. I that. So I'm running like a slave, and uh, <laughs> I'm on Pandora, and one of his songs pops up, and I was like, oh, it's dope. So I screenshot it and then posted it. Mm-hmm. Mike responded, and then uh, I just from there, I was like, man, this dude's dope. So I was following him, researching. I'm like, hold, hold up. He was an athlete? Mm. And let's and it's, he's not like an athlete who he played club ball. You know what I'm saying? You, your, your standards are high. You know me. You're, no, your you standards. Throw the, you, if you I throw if the I throw an athlete around, you better and, come I, and I do throw it around. I'll say uh, like, he was a good athlete. My, <laughs> drives me Brandon nuts. goes. Well, he was a high school football player. So never <laughs> used the word athlete again. And you know, but with that. Mike, you're you're and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Uh, two sport Gatorade Gatorade Player of the Year in basketball, baseball. Mm, I was I was I was a Gatorade Player of the Year in, in baseball. Baseball for two years. God damn, yeah. back to back. And then, uh, and then I was just at all. I wasn't Gatorade Player of the Year. I was just an all state basketball player. But I. I will give you a disclaimer. I'm from Rhode Island, so so, it's small, all, so there's no black guys. You're playing. Well, against no, no. You're like Babe Ruth. It was, I was the only white guy on my team. You're playing I against was, all white inter- guys and just crossing them up. No, no, don't don't pigeonhole me. <laughs> do not <laughs> pigeonhole. It's too early don't to pigeonhole me. Don't do that. Don't build me don't up and pigeonhole me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man, I, I was the only. I was. I went to like an inner city school. Um, it was publicly funded, but it was like a private, you know what I mean? So we had a lot of kids that it was a good basketball school. And I was very like, I was really into basketball when I was young. Then, you know, 10th grade rolls around. I started throwing, you know, I started throwing hard. So pitching and baseball separated itself for me. And I felt, you know, it became the meal, the obvious meal ticket. Yeah, you're, so, you're on your way to be a pro. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I know a lot of guys say that. And, and, and you know, coming from Rhode Island, there was still... I wasn't at like my numbers were absurd in high school. I had like a point five year, you know. But again, I'm in Rhode Island, so a lot of people, a lot of the scouts that would come, you know, they want to see. I want to see him do this against guys who because play the Latin Texas. players. You know, I want to see him guys who play in Texas year round, and and um, they they were very interested in what I would do when I changed climates and went, you know. So we went and played. I, I went to Duke. Um, yeah, you got a full ride to Duke, correct? Yeah. Yeah, well, they, you know, I got a, I got the full athletic scholarship, but for baseball, that covers about half of Duke's tuition. Really? Yeah, Duke's hey, like Duke. absurd. I mean, everything about Duke, Duke athletics are fantastic. Obviously, football is growing, but basketball is like the, you know, what I mean. So, does basketball cover the full scholarship? Oh yeah, has to. Yeah, and like the thing, the way it's split because baseball isn't such a money maker, especially collegiate baseball. Think about it. I mean, you see College World Series is starting to grow a little bit nationally, but you're never seeing. You know, think you'll never see a regular season collegiate baseball game on TV. You know what I mean? So as far as the university looking at it, it's not a money maker. So I think there's 30 guys on a team, and I think they have like 14 full scholarships to offer. So they divvy it. You know what I mean? Like I, you get. I think the maximum baseball scholarship you get is half half the tuition. But I also I didn't know they could do that. Yeah, that's how it works. But I also like you know I've I've focused a lot on on academics too. Yeah, you got so. you got good grades at Duke too. Mm, yeah. So then you have one of the lowest ERAs whatever the in lowest. Duke his, the lowest of all time Duke history yeah. baseball. That was my. Tr- I was a true freshman. I was seventeen. When I went, and so. first team All American as a freshman. Freshman mm. All American. Yeah, but that you know it's crazy because it felt like Jesus. you know when I got there it felt like everything was going perfect, but it's like now that I look back I kind of snicker at it because it was like my final hurrah. You know it was like my last hurrah. When you thought it was just gonna get going, it was so, just getting going. Yeah. But really so it was, so all that your freshman of the All American blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and then you fuck up your elbow. Yeah. Right? And the thing is like it was a shitty situation because. I, you know, you can see uh, the big, uh, basically reconstruction of my elbow. But what happened was, it was like kind of on the fence at sophomore year. So I'm going into sophomore year. In baseball, 
I don't know. I'll just explain it because I'm sure you guys probably don't know. But in collegiate baseball, you, once you commit to go play collegiate baseball, you have to play three years. Really? Yeah. It's not like a one and done situation like I basketball. Did not know that. So, you know, if I could, that would, if I was a basketball player, I would have been one and done. But, yep. you know, basically you're stuck even once you make that move. That's why a lot of guys like. A lot of guys get big money when they get drafted out of high school because they're like luring them, you know, to not go to college. It's it's essentially, you know, you make that decision, but you're there. Once you make that decision, you're there for three years. That's a big decision, right? So, you know, that's how they they give them big bread because they're like, hey, you know, doesn't yeah. it make doesn't it make sense for most people because you mature mm. in college? Like, I'm surprised you can play. But look at the risk, like, right? Look, but look at yeah, I was gonna say there, right. there's risk, and if you're like uh, really like if you're a highly skilled guy, you know, it makes sense to just go. Doesn't doesn't Tom Tommy John's surgery have a lot of success. Yeah, and, and and really like that was my mind frame the whole time. So I was, you know, to get back to it, I I hurt my I had a bunch of elbow issues at the beginning of sophomore season, and it was on the fence. You know, I went and saw Andrews, like the best surgeon. He's like, hey, I think you can rest if you rest rehab this. I think you know we could treat the summer. We could treat the summer like after sophomore season. We could treat the summer as like a slow rehab process. You won't have to cut you, you know what I mean? We won't have to go like, because it's, you know, at the very, all doctors don't, the last resort is like cutting you and actually going and making an incision because yeah. you can't, Depends you can't on your predict doctor, what's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the best doctor. You're in LA, you know, son. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, long story short, I take that choice. I rest. So sophomore season, I'm like, hey, I'm on a red shirt. This is cool. Junior year, you know, right, right when that season's starting, pop. So the rest didn't work. I actually blew it out completely. Boom, going to surgery. Another 16 months. Bro. So 16 months. Oh, yeah. Automatically, yeah. I, from an All-American freshman year, sophomore, junior year, Gone. Gone. Yeah. And then during all this, I'm sure you're just a f sad panda. I depressed. was. I really think. Sad panda. Honestly, sad, sad, sad I was rapping a, I wasn't sad panda. Bamboo. I wasn't, I wasn't rapping yet, though. I was. No, that's why I was going to say. you were. I'm, I'm sure you were. there were dark days. Oh, for sure. And what I'm trying to get to is when in the hell did you start kind of rap? Because you started rapping kind of as a joke, right? Yeah. You made a video for your teammates. Right. You. Got, I mean, I think I learned a lot in that phase of time because I, I really did I had that you know that there are guys you hear about the success stories of Tommy John so I really did I was very positive you know I that I was obviously down you know when when the, the way it played out timing wise but even during that rehab phase after the surgery I'm like fuck it man you know what I mean I might come back even throwing a little harder you know I was a hard thrower but I wasn't an exceptionally hard thrower for a closer I was in the low you know 90 and 94 but I was a closer. Yeah. I had a really power, like breaking ball. So, you know, I, I had I had a positive outlook the whole time, and I think that's the key to life, bro. Because you like, have if to. you have what, a what else are you gonna if do? I, if I was moping around, I definitely wouldn't have made mu music as a joke. You know, well, what I mean, I'm like I was in a good vibe still, so it just kind of carried over. And as I've become more of a serious musician, you realize it's all about your energy. It's all energy. about your vibe. Yeah. It's all about. Well, that, it's also man. like it, it must have been such a kind of nice surprise to you mm -hmm. when you realize that you could actually do this because for me well, that that's what i wanted to get to yeah, before we jump into yeah. that that's why because so you would you would be in the locker room just like freestyling yeah i mean to you know i really wasn't i wasn't i've, I've improved a lot you know like those no if, you, if you listen back to the first listen back to the first records there's like an obvious amateur vibe to it mm -hmm. like i'm talking 40 dollar mic Everybody. In my dorm room on GarageBand, like yeah. that first song that popped off for me, like the final version that's still out on YouTube now has like five million views or whatever it has. That was made on GarageBand on a forty dollar mic. So, yeah. in my dorm room. So it's like, you know, but, but was that when you realized? Because I know for me with stand up, I just never dared even tell anybody I was going to do it, mm -hmm. and I started doing my jokes to people like it was somebody else. So I would have my jokes, and I'd go, "Dude, I heard this comic," and I'd start doing my routine. <laughs> That's funny. And if people you're laughed, embarrassed. I was embarrassed, and I I'd, people you. would start laughing, and I'd go, "Fuck, maybe I can actually, maybe I can mm. actually write." Right. How did you kind of was that kind of the first? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, confirmation that you had something. Like yeah. one, once, once the video got those, you know, was popular. Where you're like, all right, maybe I'll start. Because right. let's be honest, as a white, let's say I'm your dad, and your his dad was personal trainer, right? Mm -hmm. Stud mm -hmm. uh, trained you since yeah, you were yeah. a kid. Yeah. So your dad, being this athletic background, stud. Hey, dad, I want to be a white rapper. <laughs> oh yeah. If I, was, I, I, I have a four month old son. If he told me that when he's <laughs> ready, I'm like, 
You're an idiot. Red flag. Yeah. White rappers don't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, they, uh, shout out to my parents. Honestly, that that's why, uh, you know, that's I, I feel like that's why I'm here because I have like a, a support system. You know, I feel like if if I did have parents that were like really panicked about it and were like, no, maybe I wouldn't have, you know, but they were like, they knew I f they felt the injury as much as I felt it. Like oh, to yeah. put it this, like these, these these like my parents would drive down every weekend. I was a closer, so there's no guarantee. It's not like I'm pitching Friday. You, I'm gonna pitch seven innings. It was like yeah, I could pitch every game. I could pitch none of the games. I could come in. You know what I mean? And they would drive down from Rhode Island Damn. every weekend. That was the dream, right? That yeah, was the like trajectory. Just the whole family it revolved around this. So when I got injured and all that kind of like we were so high and then so low, you know, I felt like they just they were just vibing with me, like you know, staying positive. And I think also the leisure that I approached it with, they didn't. No one, including myself was thinking it as a career plan it wasn't like yo dad i'm gonna be a rapper buy me a mic yeah you know what i mean yeah. like i was like i'm i'm just fucking around like yeah duke is hard but i, I had so much free time because i couldn't travel with the team yeah and i'm living with all baseball guys so my whole house is empty you know what i mean and they're all on the road playing on the weekend and i couldn't go so i had free time so i just kind of self-taught myself on garage band how to record i'm recording myself you know are there similarities do you think between like your sporting experience and like the because singing in a way is a very physical process mm, it right is, it yeah. is an athletic Performing, endeavor sure. and yeah um more the mind frame the work ethic like oh. i know it sounds probably a little you could relate to this it just sounds a little cliche but really like I've, I've gotten this far, like, yeah, I had my foot in the door, yeah, people were interested, but if I didn't continue to, like, really evolve and, like, dedicate myself to the music, I would have I would have been left behind. Oh, the you chips know I mean? are against you, my yeah. man. The chips are not for a white rapper mm -hmm. that came out of Duke. Name Mike Stead. <laughs> the, yeah, you know, like the, <laughs> the chips, the chips are not are, for... No one's like, yeah, let's see the white guy from Duke exactly. who was Gatorade Player of the Year do well in the rap game. It's very, very, no very easy ever. to hate. Yeah, very yeah. easy to hate. So, you know... It's like, have you had six, uh, support from uh, rappers you admire? Have you have people reached out? Uh, is your audience primarily white? Yeah, it is primarily white, but we we just got the cosign of all cosigns, and we're in Toronto, and Drake came to our dinner, and Drakey Drake. We we tried to get him on the fucking TV show, but he wouldn't do it. You know, it was he big time. Nah, he, son of a bitch. He, he didn't though. He it was it was really it was kind of. Charges to the game because we really the the camera crew's right there, but we weren't filming at the time, and it would have been cheesy if we were like, Yo, if you hear you, we yeah. film. You'd look you know real I mean? bad. Like, it made you over, look bad and ruined our relationship. It was cheesy, but my boy, who like like all these guys, are just have savvy. Like someone set up a camera, so we have it all on camera. That's cool. We have it all the audio. What he said, but he's just like, yo, I I really fuck with you. And he's like, I, he's it was crazy. I had no idea he had any awareness of me. And he's like, the other night, he's like, I'm with I'm with a girl, and I was playing her. I was playing your shit and some girl like he was with so I'm like picturing in my I'm trying to play it cool yeah picture in Not my head drink out. with a fucking girl in his room like balls deep yeah listen to Mike like, what are they doing you know what yeah. I mean and he was like some girl is trying to put me on this new guy I was like nah this dude Mike Stead is way harder and I was playing boom and I was like what you that's I mean? pretty that's a big deal. I mean, cool that's, yeah that's a big deal that's a big fucking deal yeah, yeah. That's, that's like it. fucking Muhammad Ali being like yeah he inbox you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. Right. That's, yeah who, who are the who are the rappers and the, the musicians that you are awed by Mm, I mean, I'd say Drake's my. I said what Drake's doing right now. I think we're watching greatness. I feel like it's a LeBron scenario where sure. once it's done, you're gonna be like, wow. You know what I mean? Because really? Drake isn't your typical like, you know, easy to love hip hop artist either. In some ways, you know, he he gets a lot. Of, I feel like it took so much unbelievable content for people to just be like. Fuck it, this to give him incredible. credit, well, he's kind of that Nickelodeon rapper for a That's while, right? Saying. Like he, he came from, he was a TV like child star in Canada yeah. acting, right. and then you can go to rap. You just don't have the same credentials to say like a Kendrick Lamar. It's a cool or, thing. You like, know, you gotta, it's dope because it, it shows that they're legit artists. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like you don't have to come mm -hmm. from this thug background and right. rap about bloods and crips. Mm -hmm. Well, hip hop's just like evolving. Like hip hop music is now pop music. Correct. You know, so it's like you need a hook. Now. It's for the masses, and you don't necessarily. It doesn't. You don't need like this whole undertone of being like really street. 
yeah. because it's for the masses. Well, the myth, and, and, if, and I think if you went that direction, you wouldn't be here now. You sure oh, no. would be on the fire and the kid. Like, say, not. say you were like rapping about bitches and killing and shooting off guns. Absolutely not. People are like, yeah. bro, you're from Duke. You yeah. know, like you play through big. Yeah, see, that's like I Duke. wouldn't even had a fucking career. Yeah, like that's that's what you, you played it smart. Yeah, well, that, I just figured it out very quickly that kids want. Like especially if you're on the internet looking for new artists, like there's a certain type of person who's like you know like yeah nowadays thing it's evolved. I've been doing it for about four and a half years now. Five, I think it was five years ago when I made that song. That joke, Damn, that's joke. nuts, man. And like that was the first time I ever recorded anything or did anything musically, you know. But it just automatically I was thrown into it. So I was learning. Like I like when I talk about I'm grimacing when I, I listen back to a lot of that older shit. I like oof. You know what I mean? You can right. tell that it's, it's it's not that it's bad, but like I was listening Amateur. to the older shit this morning, mm -hmm. and then you listen to where you're at now, it's completely different. Yeah. But I think even if you if Drake at the time came out with an album when he was four years into it, we mm -hmm. you know it's not that you laugh at it, but it's, it's a growing process. Right. You listen to this podcast, you watch one of my my first fights, like Jesus Christ, man, yeah. mm -hmm. there's no way. But I think in this day and age. Like there's so much talent out there, man. Mm. Like a like a, a Mike Stud is walking out there now. There's someone like you That's out there now. But you need a vehicle because there's so much content right now. Like you I can was get just it gonna everywhere. Say that. Uh, so you exactly need a right. vehicle to get that voice out. Mm -hmm. My like, like I felt like when I reached out to you, mm -hmm. not that you're not killing the game, mm -hmm. but our fan bases are completely different. Granted, right. it's 18 to 36 males, uh -huh. although you have way more females. Well, I'll show you some videos. <laughs> <laughs> you see our live tours, all dudes. Anyways, all, all dudes. dudes. All yeah. Literally it's all dudes. We saw just titties, dicks. But, hey, I, I see mean, think about dicks. It. Girl, it's girl, dicks. it's not like they can see you guys. So the guys can they relate. They know. The guys can relate to what you're talking about. Girl, like, you know what I mean? I feel like if you guys were on screen, well, uh, yeah, it's coming. Listen, I appreciate well, we have some more show on Mike, iTunes, Mike's son. taking me in in person, and he's he, he was quietly impressed with I'm, athleticism. I'm physically my impressed by your athleticism. Thank Thank you, sitting here. But, but, but all I was saying is, like, <laughs> like with you, I, I just feel like the more you're out there, and the reason why I think it, what you're doing works is because you don't have this huge record label, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, uh, Bad Boy or whatever, these huge record right. labels. Uh, I think that's why we have a TV show. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's like, why the fuck does this guy Mike Stead have a TV show called This Is Mike Stead? That's you know what's what I mean? interesting. I don't want to see a TV show with P. Diddy who's worried about his image, who, who's not going to show us the tour bus, yeah. or be with his boys, who, and one guy's just fucking slanging dick nonstop on the tour bus. Just slanging you know, dick. You know what I'm saying? And missing the dates. And slanging. Because if, if you're if dick slang and all over the place. He's oh, a dick slang. Antibiotics. Real cock bandit over there. Shake those two. down his throat. <laughs> Season two, I'm taking dick slang. And using. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. When I was your guy's age, I did not know what a condom looked like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't either. He still doesn't, he doesn't care. Ah, roll the fucking <laughs> dice. Don't be a baby. But, but with you, I... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Bad example, kids. But I, I said the, the reason why the TV show works and... Why more people need to tune into it is because this is what's real, man. If you have someone name any big time rapper, they're gonna mold the show where it's not real. I was, you know just, what I'm saying? I was just gonna say that. Like uh, my my Mom they're they're in they're worried about this they have this person there they have this team mm -hmm. they have this guy up top in his yeah you get more to lose you know when you get really famous what happens is a lot of people are talking in your ear and they're controlling oh, yeah. that that business that machine to, um, a friend of mine was going to do a movie he's a director mm -hmm. and he's going to do a movie with tom cruise mm -hmm. and tom cruise took one year to make a choice and ultimately said no and i said why Fuck is he you, tom I, go, I said why is he doing that and and uh, this is todd phillips who do, did the hangover and i mean todd phillips big, is a todd, big deal big right? todd yeah. phillips and fan. todd phillips are yeah, the best. And those, Todd, are like, those are like all of our favorite movies. We, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. He's, a, he's a genius. I'm but, trying not to fangirl. But, I'm but, a, <laughs> this guy to my left has been in like all my my top three. You've been in like two of them. Yeah, so. well, there you go. See that, kids? You well, hear you that? Say, we finish your thoughts. But he said that you when, fucked up when he said it. When, Tom Cruise, up. when Tom Cruise says yes, an entire machine oh, it's a chain moves. Of. Literally, you're talking about a thousand people who get involved who are making a lot of money so mm -hmm. when he says yes he's got to be very very careful because it literally will affect a thousand people mm -hmm. it, and maybe more and by the way it will infect an entire studio's year what's the last movie you so did the, uh, well when you say you got to go through the whole scientology chain with that motherfucker all you know of i'm saying like you're not it, just yeah. going to his manager well you gotta go through trouble yeah, my, my decisions affect like six guys and two of them are here so. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah so how did it start with you so Obviously, rap's taking off. Albums are doing great on iTunes, and then Esquire's like, "Yo, we want to do a TV show." Yeah, you know the TV thing is a uh, is it's an interesting story because we, uh, you guys would have really liked probably the first version of this show that that was out in the universe because we we did we shot a pilot two years ago. I was single, 
single mic's different different beast so we mm. you know it was a mm-hmm. it was a very ratchet you know for lack of a better word it was just it you was guys a were wild, wild motherfucking and that pilot, was on youtube bro. right no well yeah that's how we got that's how we got discovered yeah you know what i mean like these we got contacted by sorry by a production company you know they're like hey we you know we caught one of your touring's boring shit you guys are hilarious let's let's do something we're like cool you know like the whole time even though i was younger you know I'm, I'm a lot more kind of i guess at the forefront of the business decisions i feel like we're, we're finally really kind of understanding and hitting full stride what our moves are what our lane is but we were interested and understood that tv is an interesting opportunity I, i'm not your i'm a very unorthodox hip-hop artist so unorthodox you know platforms seem obvious you yeah. know what i mean like it seems like something that i wouldn't be shy to do so the tv thing you know we shot the pilot and it was just it was it was a plus television it was like jersey shore on steroids you know it was just Not it was though. gnarly it was like bit you know a lot of a lot of girl you know a lot of just wild shit going yeah. on and it was all the networks wanted it all the networks like the, the vh1 the mtvs and at this time in my life you know i'd say when we sh- it was about two years ago we shot that pilot and we you know as we s- were watching it we're like we all, i mean we went i remember our first time me and we we sat and watched it we we're like yo this is incredible this is a hit and then i started thinking about it you know like i'm letting it marinate a little bit i'm like we're gonna go down as these like trashy party boys celebrity like our, our celebrity would be so trashy and it would be short-lived and it would be not respectable you know what I mean? And maybe and not even who you really it's are. Not no, really, you, it's not a fair representation of who we you'd are. You'd be like, like Polly D in the rap right. game. It was a phase. It's it's a part and a phase of my life. And and uh, I feel like a phase that a lot of you know a lot of kids were relating to. Like, that was my life then. It's very and, smart that you... Mm-hmm. It's very smart that you realize that. Yeah, we, we because, pull... Because at the end of the day, that's a theatrical version or maybe a heightened extreme version of who you are in that moment. It's not... But a, then you'd have to hold on to that or re- re- replicate that. And that's very, very astute that you knew yeah. that that's not something you want to keep... I just understood. I understood before. the longevity of, like, that decision. So you, know, you, like, so you uh, told them no. Like, we're, yeah, we're down well, to do a show. I went, I went radio silent on them. I was just like, you know, my production company... and. That I'm gonna shout them out. Den of Thieves is the production company. They deserve a tip of the hat because they stuck with me. You know, I mean, I they understood. I basically, you know, it was, took a couple months, and I, you know, we went and met the Soho House here, and I was just like, this can't be the show. I have a vision for this show. Um, you know, the touring's boring, funny sarcasm shit, the crazy ratchetness. Yes, that can be there, but if it if it's if that's all of the content it's the wrong look for me and I'm not going to do this show. You know what I mean? And basically they, they made the decision right there in the spot to allow, to allow us to creatively direct this. You know what I mean? Like basically they said, we're going to make your show and we'll find the network that will do it. So, you know, six months later, Esquire says yes. And we do, and we go and they hire, they hire, you know, a woman who's Alex Lipschwitz who, you know, I think it was an awesome idea to bring in a female, you know, story runner, showrunner for this show as a female. Mm. Yeah. And it brought an interesting dynamic because, you know, it's kind of this, she got a lot out of us that you might not have gotten. Keep, keep you honest. Guy. Keep you honest. Dude, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. It was like a involved. mom. It was like yeah. travel with a mom. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And You're going to open up more. And she got that out of us. But these, like this product I'm proud of. This product is us. This product is a fair representation of me and who we are as people. So I stand by it. But, but, you gotta, but, you, but, but you also, I think if you would have done it back then, when, when they first came to you been, guys, and you're been. like this party bus, and you're, no one's going to take you serious, but mm-hmm. also you got really super validated with this last album, yeah. Climbing the iTunes. Like so it, it's like, if someone's like, yeah, I don't know Mike Stutz, like, yeah, his album was number one on iTunes. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it, <laughs> really, it really is time, timing is everything. And, um, you know, I, that decision now in hindsight, I'm just fucking so thankful I, I waited because that validation did did happen and it's not complete there's not complete validation there's a long way to go for me but there's enough validity there that you can like you know like we said I'm very easy to hate on paper so once you watch this show and you're like oh it's kind of cool like let's go listen to his music 
and then you go listen to the most recent project and it's actually good you know yeah, and it's it's, very good. it's something that's like a project that's kind of how i feel about this product of the show i just it's a product i can stand next to and be it, like this is I so like now, how it. does it's, that, it's uh, weird to me that people would hate on a, a white rapper you know or, or someone like <laughs> trying to do their best it's so weird because it goes back you to will that. get a lot of hate because it's like no, oh he's like a frat boy trying to rap it's like no man if you actually listen yeah he's also a guy risking taking chances what the fuck you but it, but, and also it's the same reason like in the nfl this isn't racist but if you see a white running back in the NFL or a white point guard in the NBA, I root for him every fucking time because that dude went through some He's an outlier. shit yeah. to get there. Yeah. Same with the rap game. If there's a white rapper who's actually doing it, Mm. He's not playing in the same lane as the rest of the guys. I think what you what you run up against as a white rapper is that because rap came from, you know, a great deal of black hardship, mm -hmm. the ghetto, the South Bronx, Absolutely. when they had nothing, when in fact the South Bronx was on fire. You you, you there there tends to be this idea that Justin uh, uh, Justin Timberlake got uh, f f shit for this. Absolutely. The idea that you haven't earned or you haven't had the experience that this came out exactly of right. therefore you're being an imposter exactly and, and right however what i think is really awesome and very very uh, encouraging is that like in the american experience this stuff all becomes biracial mm -hmm. the american expression is biracial rock and roll you know the blues was sung by black men and who, who didn't yeah. have the vote mm -hmm. and who didn't have anything and what happens it's it mixes with jazz it mixes with classical it mixes and guys in britain who are working class dudes are listening to the muddy waters mm -hmm. and going man why don't we try a version of this but add our twist and you get rock and roll right. and the beatles and, and that's yeah, what's right. so cool exactly is that this right. beautiful sort of amalgam this mixture i of, think now of, entertainment's of entertainment I mean, it is like black white right. chinese also right. in a chinese guy rap it's it, good music. I it brings. Care. It actually brings things together in a way. I, at least it forces us to contend with the idea that we are. We're not. We're not going to escape each other. That I, there I, is a cohesion with. You're music. exactly right. And you. I was going to say guys like, you know, Timberlake, um, and even Drake. He's half white and and isn't necessarily like we said your typical you know guy from the street or hardship. Those guys you know open the genre up. They open, they open, you know, that stereotype or that wall of like feeling like you need that or you need to come from that. It's just been softened. They're like massaging it, warming it up for 100%. guys like me. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it's just, it's not really about that anymore. Mm. You know, and like it's also a day and age where you can get famous in your fucking mom's basement. It doesn't matter. For sure. And I think I'm, in, I'm encouraged by it. You know, the industry is flipped upside down, but I'm not an industry guy, so mm. it's cool. But like, really, like, that's the best when there is no system there's no it's not it's not institutionalized like people like it so they go to use YouTube if it's video. good music if, it, if you like why, listening to it it's say, good music like the, there's so much content out there you you have to have so much talent to stick out man mm. but you also need the right vehicle mm -hmm. so did when you were making the show did anyone have the idea and we can get into this or you can skip it if you want was anyone like hmm maybe you should be single for the show for ratings actually no the, because they you know, he has they, a girl, right? Who's so your, who's Mike, your Mike's music earlier was about girls drinking, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I think all everyone, no one would say it to me, but everyone was a little in the back of their heads like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? This could be. Because he was a playboy. He a like, yeah, he's, persona, he's known as the playboy. It wasn't my persona. It was just who. It was just who we are. And you again, put it, you it, put it down. You were, you put some numbers. Well, you were 24, we 25. You know 24, what I mean? like, 25, 20. We're the type the of dudes that, like, think about this. Like, let's put it this way it's a much smaller scale, but we go play a show. Right. And like instead of like going into the going onto the bus and driving to the next city or going back to our hotel, like we're like, hey, we're partying right next door. Yeah. So then all the girls all were the like girls. right next door. And it was the type of we created like this whole vibe around our show where it's not like, bro, if you go, you might go party with those dudes. You you might end up in there, you might get fucked. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the girl yeah, has just, anyone ever said that? Hey, I love bro, you. You got a fine kid live? Yeah. Someone get fucked. It, though. Somebody's about, getting fucked. If girls, if girls, Big Brown's gonna fuck someone? And maybe, if you like if you maybe. like fucking guys that look just like you, then then you're getting fucked. Man, you think Big Brown's gonna titty fuck me? Yeah, if yeah. you put on it's more weighty well. It'd be like if you had a fight at the fucking garden and you're like you win it, and then you're like, "Hey guys, come meet me at fucking McAllister's. We're partying." Like, yeah, you know no, I mean? that's happened. Yeah, and like, right, but no, like, I get think it. Think about the and they easy, like the way the dick easy, tastes. It's like, it's like sharpen. Yeah, it's like yeah. fucking. You know, it's like we're fishing with dynamite. So yeah. it's like, and and really, it became a whole vibe. Where, like when I was starting, we were talking about a vehicle. Like our vehicle was touring. We're in a fucking minivan. That's how you make money as a musician sleep. now, right? Yeah, but I, that's how I'm saying. Like we 
we cr we created this word of mouth on college campuses like yo fucking Mike Stowe was here you know it was a it was a memory it was a night like it wasn't like you're also creating a fun environment yeah, like a the party music was, vibe the music was cool but the fucking vibe it's is a, you should it's insane what they do like mm. we could learn from this because it's you literally gotta, like a, it's like a fun vibe you guys they're were, drinking it's all his boys there's uh, four other dudes right and they're like all friends uh, and they're all involved it's we all you guys, 49 year old woo more drinks girl chug 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 Chugs. oh he died oh, he's 49 sorry right. he's dead sorry let me just Skype with my kids and I'll be right back with you ladies <laughs> <laughs> no, I Everybody got, call me daddy. I wish we knew you. I wish we did this before the LA show because, I mean, you guys, you guys will love it. Like it's not. You'll be the. You might be. Nah. You wouldn't be the get, oldest guy there. But, I'll tighten my skin up and we'll do it. But dude. you'll be. We'll throw you'll a backwards be, hat on him. Fuck yeah. It's like a really. It's just an interesting vibe. It's a. It's hard to. You know. What I mean, it's hard to put into words. But even a show that's like 350 people in New Mexico, you'd think is like kind of awkward. It's just a fucking rager, bro. You That's know what I mean? Like, no, they're nuts. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you when they leave. I can't it's wait. Nuts. Who is your your girl? Uh, is it's uh, Jose Canseco's daughter. I am not mad at her either. Jose Canseco. She's a fucking rock star. She's a, mm. you know, just really, really obviously super attractive. And, but Where did you guys meet? I met her at a bar. Ironically, really? Ironically, she's 19. I'm not going to say the bar that she was in. <laughs> But I, I didn't know that. She's young. I'm 27, so she's a lot younger. Not but. after one of your shows? No, no, no. Just randomly, that's at, why, just that's why randomly at one of the L.A. bars. She had no idea who I was. Like, she's she's cool. Like, she's, you know. I, I, take it you've met, I take it you've met the man. Oh, yeah. Episode 8, playing Home Run Derby with Jose. That's, a, that's an exclusive yes. for you guys. That's Tell me you cool. beat him. Uh, uh, don't actually... I mean, in all technical terms, yes, I did. <laughs> I'm going to get a text from Jose, like, you fucking serious? How tall is, is Jose? Jose is, like, a living monster. I mean, you're a big he, fucking dude, too, but this but guy's, he's like... He's 6'6", six, six, isn't he? He's, like, he's about... He's, like, 6'5", but he is 52, and he's a fucking monster. Is he yeah, still like tan as shit? He's got one of the most attractive... Attractive male tans I've ever seen. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he's. Bro, I said it. For, we were talking about. Was this yesterday? Yesterday we were just we're talking, talking about randomly. This yesterday. Randomly, and you I got made a good a tan statement. too. I want to uh -huh. let you know that. Nice I'm not gonna let that fly under the radar thanks, here, but yep. I just got back from Hawaii. Yeah, don't be mad at his. Yeah, not, don't be mad at his tan. They call me Big Brown. But I said this, and I meant it, and I and I said it with with great gravity, and I said. They, they, I, and I take in masculine pulchritude. I take it in. I study men. I've taken. I've looked at your back. I've looked at your traps. I've, you. I've looked at your Thank tries. You. I'm not mad at what I'm, I'm seeing right now. Thank You're an athlete. athlete. That kid's means a lot an athlete. From you. The kid's supple. He's got it going on. Nice voice too. Thank Absolutely. You. I, your boy over here. I shook his hand. I got you. Got you. Got some. You they got, got some good looking mitts. crew, man. You got some mitts. He's got, he's got those landscaping mitts, man. He's, he's got fucking, landscaping we call mitts. Him, we call them dick beaters. Dick yeah. beaters. That's exactly what they are. Yeah. I hired this guy out of a bar. Did you? He. I'd love. Let's, I'd love to go over how you met your whole crew. We, uh, it's so interesting. You guys are so close, tight knit. Yeah. But you can tell you're the captain of the ship, right? Like, obviously, yeah. it's it's your. He's the, he's the co-captain. It's your he's, vision. He's the enforcer of this guy, but he. Uh, For sure. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You don't, no, 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 you don't want to. You don't want to fuck around with Brendan. He'll yeah. do. He'll do whatever he wants to you right away. We don't need. We don't need that. It's, it's funny. It's funny with the I'm promotion fighters. How, 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 how married are you to the podcast? How many to bring you out on the next? On the next? I'm there. The dog. next leg of tour. I'm, I'm there, dog. No, he'd yeah. be a shitty. He's a terrible bouncer because he's not gonna fight. I like everyone. He's not gonna fight. Friendly. And you'll like yeah. fucking murder. Like we don't want like. If someone like comes too close, I don't want them like being decapitated. No, no, he's good. He's no, good I, I, I want to be your flavor you. flavor. No, he'll squeeze you till you till you cry. He knows how to squeeze. Yeah, you. he gives you squeeze what, down. Maybe submission stuff could work. No, yeah, he, I'm down, man. We can he, work he it out. Squeeze down on you. We call we call it the squeeze down because I've I've tried to grab him. I do anything I can, even when he's trying to take a nap. I jumped on him. I don't like and, you in and that. He, and he starts I don't like to giggle. You in that starts to giggle and then no, I'm not. Hey, so for like those who haven't seen the show, the reason why the show works, obviously, Mike Studs a talented dude, but the the crew behind you really is what makes a yeah. lot of the show That's because what, there's so many different personalities. Right. There's so many moving parts. And it, I think if you watch one episode, you're like, these guys are going to crash and burn, man. Because they're all friends. Some are getting drunk. Yep. One guy's getting his dick sucked in the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, there's hey, no hey, way. Whoa. Whoa. In Pretty the back? Single. In yeah, the back? it's a bus. Where, it's called the Boom Boom Room. It hasn't happened yet. Have you gotten They a, call it Bulldog. Have you not from a, the back. Have you gotten a blowjob on camera yet? Has that happened yet? It, has it happened on the season? No, yet? it hasn't. No, no, no. I would have known. I so called him out. We're, that's that's why we're really pushed. Like they moved us back to the 11 p.m. spot because we get pretty ratchet. I wasn't. Yeah. That's why I said we we did not. I did not allow them to say. They could not tell us what to do, what to say ever, and that was contingent in our contract. Like I'm not ever gonna do some cheesy. Like that's that's what the TV thing was like. It was like 
a leap of faith for me. I was like in my own head, like I'm a thinker type of dude. I yeah. think everything out and I was really wrapped. I was kind of ass backwards. I didn't know what was the right move. Like if you think about it, it's cool to be on TV, but like there's also a connotation of like, reality tv there's just cheesiness you know what i mean it's For like sure. these guys are yeah. scripted really you can tell it's most produced, of scripted like, yeah and i fucking hate reality tv yeah so yeah, i can't get enough you know it, yeah. yeah i mean yeah. yeah i fucking hate it so yeah. i i don't i mean I, I get why it's entertaining For sure. i think a lot of people i think the secret to reality tv like a lot of this hit reality tv shows i think i figured it out high one night i was thinking in my bed um you know reality tv shows like people are so drawn to it and attached to it because they like kind of hate those they kind of hate the people they're like I yeah fucking true hate these. they want to like, see people but you do, want do like, as badly like, as they are yeah they want to be like what the like even like i catch myself like I'll, I'll be scrolling through i'm not attached to the people i'm not fans but like it's so stupid i'm like it's like just you know what i mean it's, it's also a good way to zone out like you probably understand this because yeah. you, you know like yeah you, you do you hate it like he does yeah see, I, I'll, I I'll get balls deep in like uh he'll watch hip-hop wives oh. of la i'm just oh no no, no, no. I hate, no, no he he they did what it. like i'm just because it's a way to zone the, out yeah. the funny thing with you is that bringing it back to jose canseco who by the way i was going to say before I have as my best looking athlete he said of, all of all time. time. Of all he time. did rank him up. Which that is was with which Jerry, is, that yeah. was Turtle you from Montreal. Yes. You can, you so can imagine the out. type of jeans I'm working with over there. That's I was, why. It's a, I was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and but now you got this giant man who is dad watching the show, and you, you got to keep. Did you, you got to be in the best it's, behavior. It's funny. The episode eight really chronicles it, but there's a funny little dialogue between me and Jose, and like in the media, you know, he was walking around LA, and TMZ caught him. And they're like, what do you what do you think? You know, TMZ had covered me and Josie a little bit, like, mm -hmm. and Josie's a very. It's awesome because she's not what you think she is. You know, like when I met, you know, she's very immersed. In, she grew up in Hollywood. She's you know friends with Bieber, friends with all these guys, all these you know very high level celebrities, young you know young Hollywood, and she's very immersed in that. And I'm not. You know, what I mean, like, yeah, we moved out here. Now we we are a bit, but you know, when I met her, I was like some fucking youtube rapper you know so she had no idea who i was but um for sure get bieber on a track i forget what i was what i where i was going with this what were so jose yeah i mean yeah so tmz was covering us you know a little bit in our relationship publicly and then they asked they see jose they're like hey, what do you what do you think about do you approve of mike stud and he's like well you know i talked to him on the phone one time i'd never met him he's like i talked to him on the phone he seems nice he's like and mind you this guy blew off his finger with his own gun like that was in the news too. It blew off, literally, fired it off and blasted it. This is off. Jose. Yeah, this happened. Jose like, did? This happened like three years ago. Oh shit! It was, yeah. it was like a news thing on TMZ. It was like a funny thing. People, but um, Damn, he Jose. goes, "Yeah, I'm gonna answer the door. With, you know, when he comes to visit, I'm gonna answer the door with a gun. And see how he reacts." That's my nice. mom. Like, he doesn't really I, need I'm a gun. Tour. I'm on tour. Yeah, one, he doesn't need a gun. Two. I'm on tour. I wake up to like three texts from my mom. In a panic. <laughs> my mom's in a fucking panic. Like, have you have you seen this? Is this serious? <laughs> you know what I'm thinking is that you've got you've got those you had Conseco jeans. If you and your girl, his his daughter, breeder. have a child, the breeder, it's going to be very difficult not to push that kid into some kind of a, uh, a baseball career. Uh, obviously, guys, you have to. <laughs> you got to do it. I'm going to be like soft tossing to him as an infant. Oh, shit, man. But, I mean, uh, yeah, what? you know, Jose uh, is actually a fucking, been a very pleasant surprise because I didn't, I didn't know, you know. The media tw almost makes him out to be well, kind of a tool. Matter, like, I read his book, but we were talking about it uh, on Monday's show with yeah. Jerry. It's like he got such a bad rap because, like, oh, he's just hating with all the steroid allegation stuff. He was one hundred percent correct. Yeah. He was oh, just about like, all those he dudes. He was like, "Fuck it, everyone wants to burn me. This is how it's going well, down." He just, I, it's cool because yeah. we actually have like a pretty cool segment. He's he's talking about it on the show, like about the book and how he regrets writing it. But um, he regrets writing it. He regrets writing. I'm a fan. He, he regrets fan. writing it. Like he he like I was saying, he, he surprised. You know, I was pleasantly surprised. His self awareness and you know he, he's kind of. How old is he now? 52. You yeah. know how he does that thing with his eyes when he does this? Yes, correct. When I he watch him, I have to do it. Like I mind. started thinking about him, I started doing it. Yeah, for real. He was talking the first time he was talking to me, he's blinking. I was like, was kind of, I didn't know he had Tourette's. And then Josie told me he had like minor Tourette's. But weird. Maybe I'm getting it because of from head trauma. Because when I see or if I see someone doing it and I think about it, and I start blinking my eyes really hard. Huh. Just go get that checked out. Does his twin brother have the same thing? It's a legit point. He might. His huh. his twin. I haven't met him, but they're huh. like fucking identical. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but Jose, like he, he, he's. I was like, it was a cool guy to be around and hear him talk. You know what I mean? But he, he says it. He's like, man, I, 
you know, I, I was telling the fucking truth. And now it came out in post, but like, you know, at the time he was just so tainted. He was so butthurt about, you know, he was the one guy that sure. like, they just banned him. Yeah. You know I mean? that, and he felt like everyone's doing it and I'm getting, you know what I mean? Like it, all of his peers were doing it. And he just felt like it was unfair and it does was he, does irrational. He not, does he not care what the like the public or media thinks of him? Because if he, he wanted to, he could come out now. Like, come on here, come on ESPN. If, you, want, if you guys want him on here, I'll get 100%. him on here. 100%. Love to 100%. get him on. I'll get him on, I'll get him on, get him on Love here. to get yeah, him on. But so he could literally just come on and be like, what's up? Yeah. I fucking told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, you know, his, what's up now? His, his, his vibe is just kind of like, I regret, you know, because he had, a, he's had, a, you know, he's very, he's a, he was a fucking, like, he was he was an all star perennial baseball player, but he was an all star celebrity. Yeah. Oh, legit! So oh, yeah. like man. this guy was a rock star. If oh, he was yeah. here, the if Bash he was Brothers? this generation, he'd be the biggest thing, and he'd be a fucking hundred million dollar contract guy. Easily. But, but now, you know, he, he just baseball and the way it fell apart kind of like broke him down a little bit as a man, and I feel like it humbled him a little bit. He's I, also I got fifty two. You get that way, you know? Yeah, I got a yeah. He, he he's a very prideful guy, and I'm still a very like just dominant alpha male. So he's obviously not. I'm not. He's not like some soft spoken humble guy. He, he he holds his own, but you can get that undertone of like, you know, he he looks back and might have done some might have done some things differently. You know, that makes but sense. he's talking about how he missed out on a lot of roles in Hollywood. Mm. You know, he's this guy's a MMA like he's fully skilled and black. He's like a black belt. Oh you know uh, yeah, no, he fought. Um, he he like, fought in uh, Japan. Yeah, he has like wow. crazy. Vi I don't know how good of a fighter he, he is, but like, the fight was terrible. But yeah, still, it's but not he, his fault. But he could like for movies like this guy's like a huge oh guy. Oh my god, hundred percent. Like, they liked him for a lot of roles, and they said no one would touch him after. After that, that. after yeah. the steroids. Damn. After the book. After the book. Oh, after the book. Because yeah, right. he kind of. There's, so much, he, he there's just, so much hatred. He's just him. like labeled as a huge snitch, and, and it was a snitch move, you know. But at the same time, he felt. Was there a lot of uh, PEDs in uh, college baseball? A fair amount. The really? guy you, in, the, in the Cape. In, in the Cape, I don't know if you guys know about the Cape Cod League, <laughs> no. Summer League. It's it's really where the the movie Summer catches about it. Great film. Good movie. Kind really of sarcastic, but I, I enjoyed the movie. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Freddie Prince did a good yeah. job. Okay. But uh, but no, like it, 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 the Cape Cod League is an awesome vibe because you're out there, you're, you're living with families on the Cape. It's all all the best guys in the country collegially, all in one place. Like you, you, it's like where you get to see guys. You know, I'm like the guy who started the major league base, you know, all star game. Chris Sale was was in that. You know, I remember pitching against my first night in the Cape. I pitched against him. And, Damn. Like so, you get to see people. Everyone goes out there in the summer to watch baseball because. Those guys aren't going to end up being big leaguers. You yeah. know what I mean? But, um, yeah, like, essentially, you know, when we went out to the Cape, it was – that's where – that's really where, like, the arm – you know, I didn't really get to get the full experience of the Cape, but that's where, you know – I don't. I probably shouldn't even say this, but I, you saw some stuff. Dabbling that, in some dabbling with that, But it, it's, it's part of the culture. You know what I mean? That, I think that's professional sports. I think – it, 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 Even part, college I it saw is, it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, like, in people football, don't – you saw it? People don't understand course, these fucking. Yeah. People don't understand. You know, you do, the, the shit that your body goes through. Um, when you're talking about 160 games, pff, it's insane. It's, it's crazy. It's absurd, man. It's I don't. Ridiculous. I don't. And baseball like, was the best. For pitchers. Baseball people in a way people was, don't give pitchers the credit because it's over uh -huh. and over uh -huh. and on here. It's the it, velocity nonstop, and then I, you got to rest. And they're like, "Well, they have three days off." I'm like, "Are you kidding?" There's me? There's a whole man? sports segment. Si like I watched the sports science segment on this. It's it's literally. In all of sports, throwing overhand is the most unnatural thing for the human body in all of sports. It's nuts. Mm. So that's why everyone gets surgery. All these things happen. All yeah, you hear about Tommy John's success stories, but like I said, in college, I played, I didn't say this yet, but I, I played with probably seven or eight guys who had Tommy John, and none of them came back. They, they, they were one of the best arguments I heard, or one of the temptation of steroids, was with baseball. In fact, the guy who did fight science and sports science, John Brank, is in his book. Yeah. He talks about this. He, he kind of created, he s s showed it like this. If you are somebody who is either 30 years old and your bat speed starts to slow down, mm -hmm. and then somebody comes up to you and says, listen, uh, you're playing 160 games a year, you're getting injured, I'm going to give you a something that's going to make you look better, you're going to be more muscular, uh, you're going to play the game for at least five more years mm -hmm. at a top high level, the game you love, and that's worth in dollars, oh, 
20, 30, 40 million dollars more or 10 million dollars. Who wouldn't do Would it? Would you do it? But, right. But Who and then, and then you're looking to your left and you're looking to your right and they're doing it. Exactly. Fuck yeah. But then also like in baseball, I feel different about it because no one's physically getting hurt. I hit a baseball over the fence. Mm-hmm. It's not physically harming mm-hmm. anyone. Mm-hmm. And the, usually the pitcher's throwing me the balls juice to the gills. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like it's, it's a, an even. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of like like, a, we, like we had Chael Sonnen on yesterday who oh, was yeah. kind of Lance Armstrong for our sport, mm-hmm. the poster boy for PDs. Mm-hmm. And he was just saying, man, for me to even compete, like I was fighting Vitor Belfort, who's Mr. Steroids. Yeah. He's like, I know for me to even compete in the octagon with him, I have to get on some shit, man. Absolutely. Like otherwise it's um, – it's not even a fight. Mm-hmm. It's a culture. That's it's it's embedded in the culture of of athletics. There's a it's human nature. You got to find ways and avenues to to, to better yourself. Mm-hmm. And it, well, it, technology is only getting started with this. When you're able to manipulate your genes and all that, I mean, we're we're HG. I, it makes you wonder as science gets crazier and crazier about this stuff and you're able to oxygenate your blood you're able to keep yeah. your muscles even bigger you can't trace it you wonder what that says about competition mm-hmm. you really do you wonder are we gonna have just natural leagues and then unnatural leagues i don't know if, i don't know if baseball will ever escape it i don't know because, i don't think any sport will because right. the, thing, the thing with hgh it's like it's it's an, it's a natural thing so you know guys i think guys do it and find ways and uh, you're talking about guys with millions and millions of dollars <laughs> investing in themselves you know so they're spending top dollar getting the best guys to cook up this you know to cook up this stuff that's undetectable it's always ahead of the next curve and what's I think, testing like in major baseball i think I, I know I, I mean i'm very close with tons of guys and your your boy that you played with on dukes uh, marcus su- Stroman, he's yeah. stud he's super stud, stud. Yeah, yeah he he you know and, and a lot of guys that play with a lot of guys that are listeners, you know, that's that's a big reason why I'm here. You know, I don't have, I don't, just, you know, I told you the Drake story, but no one knows that. You know what I mean? But I don't really get the public like, oh, all the best rappers in the game love Mike. St-. Like, it's not, I don't get the cosigns from like the Kanye's and the guys, a lot of rappers were, you know, that, that can launch their career. For me, what's helped, it never launches my career, but it constantly builds my career. My fan base is all athletes. You know what I mean? Like, I have, if I say it on stage, I'm like, how many people are athletes or now or were athletes? Everyone, girls, guys, everyone's Word. raising their hands. So wow. it's like because they can relate. So to the you. cosigns of these elite athletes almost hold more weight to my fan base 100%. than if Kanye did, hmm. because my fan base is a niche fan base. It's not you know your typical hip hop fan base. So that's been an avenue and a vehicle. We talk about vehicles like that's. You know those guys. Those guys just take to my music. One probably because of my backstory. Two, a lot of sports references in my music. But also talent recognizes talent. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I think those guys more than anyone, they don't give a fuck with my back. Like, you know, they don't care. They just they if they like the shit. They listen to it. But you know but it's I mean? also cool because you are from an athletic background, and also, I I I think if if you this, this book guys are even saying the same thing if mastering that your ego is the enemy they were they're saying like talent's always gonna come out eventually like the hard work's mm. gonna come out right. so you're working your ass off right. you have the skills i think people in the business recognize that and it's mm-hmm. just a matter of time right you know what i'm saying yeah you know that's right. where the vehicles come into play right it's just for me it's been about sticking with it man I, i've worked i've worked my fucking ass off as far as like i'm very very behind um you know like i said that first song i made i literally thought I literally thought my teammates were the only ones. I didn't think my parents were going to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, it it was something where I was just like, this is for my team. We're going to play this in the clubhouse. We're going to play this at baseball parties. Did you get nervous, though? Like, like he, like, he, because he had to fight on a main stage, Mm -hmm. like, he'll get up and do stand-up in front of a thousand people. Mm -hmm. Nobody understands how hard that is. Mm -hmm. And he's never, he never, hashtag sold out. Yeah, he never did, uh, hashtag Phoenix, uh, uh, July uh, 29th, 30th. Uh, We love that. but, uh, But he never... He never was. He never started in the small clubs. He never started with a small group with his friends. He was kind of thrown into. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Hey, you, go out in front of th- you know eight hundred screaming dudes and do stand up." And he's like, "What the fuck?" And I it didn't dawn on me like he'd be a little nervous, mm-hmm. and it didn't dawn on me that this is a giant step for somebody. Mm-hmm. But he'd been th- he'd been through. We he'd have been so in many underwear similarities, fighting. Man. So did you feel the first time you performed? Was it? It had to have been nerve. Where was the first performance? Nah, yeah, yeah. great question. I, I remember. Yeah. A really good question. 
Thank you. I'm, I'm really good. fucking impressed by you. Thank you, buddy. You're impressed. I don't know why. Great, I, like, I was like, great job. Yeah. Oh, my dick. These are impressive guys. Oh, guys, guys. Fucking dicks hanging out. In you find pants. out we're just gay as shit. You look down and I'm not wearing He's, pants. I'm a sugar baby. My, my you guys can't this see. This is all fake. Yep. You guys hey, man, can't see it. We're here to fuck you guys. Yep. <laughs> we saw you in Esquire. Fake mics. We love Door it. locked. We got, we're not even recording. What a fucking weird vibe yeah. in here. It's a gangbang on Special K in the corner. Special K takes her wig off. She's a dude. It's a porno. A gas is coming out of the vent. Esquire, you guys get you guys get dizzy. Season. Yeah, I'm here for the gangbang. I was gonna I was gonna knock the door. I'm here for the gangbang. I wish you did. I'm here for the gangbang. Old school, old school. You guys callback. fucked up my entrance. And that was Todd Phillips. Uh, so uh, yeah, your first. So your first. Honestly, no. This, this is a great question, yeah. but uh, um, to just preface this, this that's honestly like kind of the underlying factors where I I realized personally that this is what I was meant to do because I remember. You know, I had that All-American season, and I remember going out and pitching at Miami, like one of my last outings ever healthy. And uh, I'm fucking nervous. You know what I mean? Like I, I had my, I, I was already an All-American. It was like the last, it was the last two innings I threw, and I was nervous. You know, I went out, I had butterflies. I was nervous. It was my first time. You know, Miami is one of the one of the collegiate teams in the country that they have like two, three thousand people there. You know, there's a big legacy there. And uh, I remember being nervous, you know, like I remember thinking, oh, fuck, I'm from Rhode Island. It's crazy. You know, like I made it here and uh, never once have I been nervous ever before going that's on stage why? or being on stage. Like I'm talking. What? That's where I've you never belong. Even, I've never even had a butterfly. That's where you belong. So like for me, it was like kind of this like, wow, you know, like it's crazy, but this is probably what I was meant to be. It's the most natural thing I've ever done. And then you just ran with it. So, you know, that's what happened. I got on stage and I was just being myself and How many people are on that stage though? The first play the first like show I ever did, I remember it. it it wasn't that small because I, I opened and I did I have played shows that small my, but the first show ever I opened for a guy named Chris Webby, who's another white rapper who, you know, who at that time was in my eyes success you know, was For was sure. Big. Webby so was a big this deal. Is a big opportunity yeah. and and um you know, I went and played the show. It was probably about 200 people in Baltimore. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of where I, rem I remember being like, I'm not fucking nervous at all. And we went out, that's and I had, crazy. like, three songs. And we just went out and fucking raged on stage. And, like, the people just – I feel like that has been – if I could give any, any advice to anyone, not even doing music, but just that's going out and putting themselves out in front of people – you know, on a public scale, I'm going to be a public figure. I think the key to the key to success is, is being yourself. All, you know what I mean? Like, time. if yeah. I feel like human beings subconsciously could look at another human being and just be like, "That dude's being authentic." Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, so sure, I might not, so I might not vibe with it. It might not be my thing, but that guy's that's him. You know, and Correct. I think that's why you are, can never look bad when you're really honest or really, really. Um, Vulnerable. Vulnerable. It's it's interesting because when you kind of go, look, man, even when people really fuck up, like when they even when they really fuck up and they say something like, yeah, I did it and uh, I, I feel really ashamed. That's what I want to say with John Jones. I don't know if you guys follow UFC with John Jones, right? You got I cheated, yeah. He should just get on the mic like, all right, man, I'm fucking 27, 28. I'm the greatest fighter of all time. When they The night before they came to test me, I was balls deep in some girl doing lines off this girl's titties. What do you want me to How do? About Tiger I'm Woods. the best dude in the world. Right. I thought that I way about up. Tiger I'll be Woods. Back in two years. When Tiger Woods was reading that statement, I was like, stop, put that fucking thing down and say this. Hey, guys, I was the most famous golfer in the world. I've had to be perfect my entire life. I had the best looking women in the world throwing themselves at me. I also have the I, personality of this right, kettlebell. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be this way. And I have no person. And I, and I, and I, I'm going to try to be better. I'm going to try to be better. I cheat on my wife a lot. I committed gross infidelity. Like a lot, a lot. I actually felt guilty, but I really liked it. That's the truth. I'm not saying I admire myself. I'm embarrassed and ashamed, mainly because of my kids. But I'm going to try to be better. And then I would say, hey, fellas, try being me and not fucking slaying By the this way, small Asian dick. Exactly. Fuck you. He doesn't, also, it's not, it, sir. It's half. It's, yeah, okay. But correct. Don't you're, say it's small. Correct. You're being stereotypical. Well, there's half. Well, he's half black, half dad, Asian. Yeah, dad was so yeah, a you really, you really have no idea. That's one guy you have no idea. Yeah, what, I've heard he's got. I've heard he's got. He's working with something. You're yeah. full of shit. Oh no. No. no really? No. Yeah. And he and I know. He and I fucking know. That's that's. Uh, 
He's got dick beaten hands. That's good to know. I got skeptical hippo eyes right now, man. <laughs> He's I don't skeptical know. hippo at you. And I don't know. I'm just saying. Anyway. I'm glad we've covered dick size. I'm glad we covered Tommy John surgery. Before, we before, then we got a segment, current events, where it's all this shit, yeah. and you'll be able to chime in. Mm -hmm. um, what were we even talking about? I'm having so much fun, I forgot. You don't even have to. We don't even have to try and go uh, back performance. to it. Performance, performance, performance. butterflies. But, but, but yeah. what's weird to me is that do you think because you're on such a big stage, all American, performing in front of these crowds, and then going where, where you're not, where the pressure, where the pressure's not the same, where you're. You know where you're. Yeah, no, no, I, I, without uh, That's with, what without question, out? being a, I was a closer, so I would I would go in the Sandman. They they bring me in the fucking worst situations. I'm talking like, dude, that's my so dad. Crazy. I think my dad still has anxiety from it. He'd be like, he tell he said it in the oh. first episode. He's like, I still get nervous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they'd bring me in, and I was and like, I remember that Miami outing. I specifically, I'm pitching against two guys that are like really good big leaguers right now. Uh, um, Yasmani Grandal and Yonder Alonso, who's like a really, they're not mainstream names yet, but they're like really, really good pros. Yeah. And they uh, they bring me in, I'm facing fucking Yonder Alonso, bases loaded. That's like my first, you know what I mean? How'd it's that just, pan out? They ground it out. Yeah. Move. Game Cause, move. Cause, cause you all hit there, a couple, there are a couple things as you, <laughs> as you bring this up, there are a couple things that make me nervous when I watch sports. One is, believe it or not, when I watch. The finals, or like when it, all the chips are on the line, when I watch figure skating. Yeah, hashtag gay shit. I know. Mm -hmm. When I watch figure skating, I'm like, don't screw up. When I watch gymnastics, when a girl's got to okay, hit that ball. I, I know. I didn't peg you as a figure skating guy or a gymnastics I, I am, guy. I am a secret. I'm secret figure you skating fan. Secret uh, gymnastics fan, girls. Hey, fuck uh, all the sports. Hold on, Think hold on. Being goalie and for pitching. Brazil in the World Cup. Uh, no, that's another one. Fuck your ice skating. That's another one. That's another one. And then pitching. Pitching when all the chips are on the line and you're facing a monster at the plate and you've got to basically throw that line or you got to throw a junk or you got to fool him and or, get him thinking what they... Or let me do you one better. Try being Misha Tate when you're the main event on the biggest UFC of all time. Right. And you're supposed issue. to carry the card and you get punched in the face and choked out. That yeah. though, that though I feel like fighting, of course, but I, I feel like There's when there's... no so, more when pressure. No, no, I know, but the, when things are so, when things are so precise... Yeah, I was so say, precise, fighting, I, I can buy, I agree with you a little bit because fighting... I mean, I, I don't want to, you're the fucking expert Bring it. over there, but I'm basically, like, fighting is just such an adrenaline-based, I mean, do you lose yourself when you get in there, or you... When you do, you get knocked the fuck out very early. So you just that gotta stay to extremely tactical. Well, but the thing is, is you gotta remember... <laughs> when you in, do, you get knocked out. That's probably the early. biggest battle. Well, but, 100%, but in baseball, I know I go to the mound, I throw pitches. Yeah, I can throw a million different pitches, and this batter, you might be, you know, left, righty, whatever... But I know what's going to happen. He's going to swing. I'm going to throw this ball at him, right? True. I'm trying to get him out. In fighting, there's a million different circumstances that mm -hmm. could happen. It's the the unknown is so fucking 100%. scary. Because yeah, right, right. I don't know. I have no idea. But in a way, that's almost what. I, in a way, I guess what that's I'm why saying. The pressure's so but, high. But what I, in a way, what I'm trying to say is like. It, oh, and also, like, if I lose, I get half my. No, no, no. But in a way, what I'm trying oh, to say I is get what, listen, my But wait. But what I'm saying is that it's not. That's not okay. what I'm saying. In a way, when you take all that out and you have only one job. Only make this putt. Just make this putt. I'll just throw this ball over the plate. In a way, because of the You're precision right. of that, because of the, the minimalist precision, that's where the pressure can Dude, be. I, I disagree. I, I, no, I know you guys agree. I disagree for this reason, though, Mike. And then you can argue your point. Hmm. I can get on a mound and throw that exact pitch I'm going to throw in the game one million times before I face it's fucking not Ortiz. Same. It's not, not the same because the pressure's different, but I can at least duplicate it, the exact speed, but you're my not, exact stance. But that's, you I only have that, one, you have that one opportunity with David Ortiz, just like you have that one, that, that one round with that guy. You have no idea what their approach is, what he's looking for. It's, it's, uh, and you can't throw and the I think, same pitch. I think you're right. It's just, it's just an agree to disagree because I, I, I remember like thinking about what you said, like, I get most nervous. I watch all sports. I get really nervous for the kicker at the end of the game. Like I, the same thing. I'm like, I'm not trying oh to compare God. the two. I'm trying to make a point, a larger point here. I, I, I'm not taking anything away from MMA or the pressure on either sport. It's different. Yeah. What I was trying to say is this: that there's there is a mindset you must have for something like that. And and did you like? How did you talk to yourself? Did yeah. you or did you did you try to just draw a blank? Like, what was the psychology? Because I, I we you and I have talked a little bit about fighting, which might be a very different thing. Thing. But for this, like, I've always wondered, like, with golfers, just make this putt with a pitcher. Just don't fucking throw wild. The or biggest just battle, the biggest battle when it's it, it's, a, it's about the biggest battle is with yourself. Right. You know, like very similarly to you know the guy who makes that putt ten out of ten times, but you're battling yourself when when all the chips are down, and it's a similar situation, especially closing. It's it's different when you start a game. 
and a lot of guys, you know, some guys are very sharp when they start. There's guys who have tendencies where they kind of ease into their starts. And um, there were parts of me that I remember wishing, like, oh, I wish I could be a star. You come in on fresh innings. You know, a lot of times they just you got a lot of time in. left in the you're, game. You're, you're thrown into it, and you're dealing with, you know, a mess that the pitcher before you created. For sure. And it's like that. everything's on, on you, but you – Pitch one, it, it's time to execute. There's mm -hmm. no, it's not like figure it out first few batters. Let's get comfortable. Yeah, it's clutch time. There's nothing. So it's it's really what they look for in, in closers is, is a personality. You know, they they look for certain pitches. Obviously, like I had a, I had a, my breaking balls. You know, it was an A plus yeah. breaking ball, um, and that was really my only A plus pitch. But uh, you know, it it really as much as the pitches is what they look for. Like I know coaches for a fact. They look for a certain personality. Just gotta have you gotta have ice water, you know, and it's it's one of those things where I think, you know, as a mind frame, it's really it's a it's a battle with yourself. I wish, you know, I wish I was the person I am now. I, 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 I hear you. And and I, I you know, I did have you know, I had my last healthy season, I was, you know, very successful, but you know, I was an eighteen year old kid. I don't even remember what I used to think about on my day to day fucking it's crazy nobody who's it's, older it's doesn't say that. that we all say try being 49 where you're like dude if i knew the shit oh, i know, know. now but right. don't, don't you think that yeah. mindset is the same for everything it is. entertainer football Absolutely. player mma like so that but, mindset but, it, it, i think we get back, battle with yeah, yourself back to like the main point it, I, without my experience as a closer or as a pitcher or as an athlete i'm at a pretty high scale um, I don't think I go into this as seamlessly as I did. No way. Because I, you know, going getting on stage and you, back to your point about him and the, getting on stage to do stand up, it's like you just feel like I almost felt it always felt lesser. It felt le like it felt like a lesser pressure. See, I feel more pressure because I feel you like you feel more pressure when you go stand up. Stand well, up. it's a different kind of pressure because you're, you know, what I'm saying like. Yeah. It's a little different because I was I'm what, sure eight, eight years as a professional athlete, so people knew me as a professional athlete. So when you go up there, like, look at this meathead trying to slang jokes. Yeah, so stand I up's feel, a different vibe. I feel like you're constantly trying to be like, stand up's no, different though, because you got to get him to laugh and you have to see results immediately. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah that's what I'm saying. Different vibe. It's, more, I mean, it's more immediate. It's like being a closer in pitching. Yeah, yeah. Got to yeah. be good. Yeah. Got to be good in a way with your first pitch because you go oh, out right there, away. Yeah, you're, you're you can't. You go out there in front of a thousand people. It gets quiet. I've seen very famous. Actors and people try stand up, and people love them, and they go cheery, cheery, cheery. And then uh, three minutes in, it gets oh, quiet. I, I feel nasty. It gets quiet. Let me ask you this, Mike. I'd be what, scared. What, I'd be nervous to do. Oh. What's more rewarding? Sold out crowd at one of your concerts right now. Like the name, the biggest concert you've had: three thousand, four thousand, three thousand, three thousand people sold out. That's a lot. Girls in the front row. Your boys. What's more rewarding? That where you kill it. Or meeting me. closing for, for Miami when you were um, absolutely the, the the stage. Not even close, right? It's not even close. I mean, for there's like some obvious reasons. Like, if you think about it, we I headline all my shows. I'm, like, I talk about opening in the beginning. We've made it as kind of a business, kind of a it kind of happened this way. But I will take credit for like the strategy. I've never. I, I think there's value in people buying a ticket with your name on it. 100%. And it might it might be in a shitty bar in fucking Arkansas, but those two hundred people bought a ticket to see Mike Stud because they're they're fans. So like, I think my approach that helped me like with the you know maybe that's why I was never nervous. I kind of like I just thought about it very kind of generally. Like these people are already here to come see me. They're yeah. they're already supporters. Let's go out and have a good time. I know they I know they already are partially invested in me. Um, you're not trying to win them over and it's not it's not like stand up when there's like a lineup like you know or i guess i guess that's not, that's not necessarily fair to say but it's like i get more nervous hypothetically if i'm on a lineup where i don't know if anyone fucking there no like sometimes i play I, I play these bigger festivals now as i've gotten bigger and we go and we're like, I have no idea how this is gonna be. You know, like, yeah, there's six thousand tickets sold. Yeah, I know. Um, but how but many are how many people? Familiar? And then there's also that awkwardness of like, you know, just like you could lose a room. Yeah. You lose a crowd, and because they start talking. Yeah, and it's just all, like they're not necessarily they don't they've never heard of you before, and you know, again, you're Mike Stud, the white rapper, and you're here to see someone else, and you're like, who the fuck is this guy? See, I think why it's more rewarding, and this is why I was telling Brian is because. 
it, it, as a fighter, if you let's say uh, UFC, my last fight, UFC 183 or where the fuck it was, 163, mm -hmm. you're paying to see the lump sum of fighters. You're there for the UFC experience. You're not really there buying a ticket to see Brendan Shop fight. Mm -hmm. You come to the fire and the kid, you're buying a ticket to see Brendan Shop and Brian Callen slang some jokes and entertain you. Exactly. So you're you're there for us. Hashtag Phoenix that, July 29th. That, that's, <laughs> that's why I feel like it's more rewarding. Right. Because the love you get from the fans and the one-on-one -on -one reaction, yes. you might be a great closer at Duke, but mm -hmm. there's 3,000 people in the stands. They're there to see Duke beat my yeah. you know I mean, the, the, me the memories and the experiences that I've had meeting people um, you have a real effect on him too. Like yeah. he has a song I think, depre about depression, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I was playing a show. This is three and a half years ago. I'm playing a show in, in Cleveland, and 200 people there. Uh, and I do meet and greets. And at this point, I was meeting pretty much anyone who wanted to meet me. For you sure. know what I mean? And um, this girl comes up to me. She waited. She's the last to go. And she's just fucking. As soon as she gets up to me, she just loses her mind, starts crying. Sad band, no. And uh, it wasn't like a fan, fan, fan girl crying. It was like, Des you know, desperation. Yeah, like I had one, you know, one song where I talked about. I, I, I kind of, you know, people will look at my story and be like, bro, people with a lot bigger problems and fucking not being an all-American baseball it's player. Not about anymore. That. It's not about But it, it's more just about like the understanding of like you know having a path or having a goal and having it stripped away. Mm -hmm. A lot of people related to that, like just it's a story more of a perseverance and like, you know, when one, you know, it sounds cliche when one door closes, another opens. And and with her, I had, I had some lyrics. I, I talked about how I felt like I had let down my family and I was talking about, you know, I forget the song that she referenced, but essentially, you know, she had said some these few lyrics had really spoke to her. Um, and she she's very severely, severely depressed. She's 16. I attempted suicide like three times and she's like I she's like a week you know like this whole month I was just wanted to see this concert and then I was gonna kill myself Jesus. she's like I, this was the last thing I wanted to do and she's like tonight change that I want I want to be alive god damn it and, yeah. then, and then I, I, I cool have had those experiences because, because then you see his fans you see people now who suffer from depression it's real man like I dated a girl with depression I had no idea I'm like for sure just Eat ice cream cone, shut the fuck up, and mm -hmm. let's go to the beach, and mm -hmm. we'll figure it out. It, do, it doesn't no, work no, it like does that. No, it does not work like It's that. a straight sickness, sickness like yeah. disease. Yes. It really despair, it. despair when you take your own life. I've had experience with that. But back to him, yeah. yeah. So you you see fans now with their his lyrics tattooed on them. Wow. You see like oh, a, place, a bunch yeah. of people that suffer from depression. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, you help me, man. It's yeah. so all important. his shows. We uh, so so you know, I, I was like obviously taken aback. Um, and I, you know, I took her number directly and I was like, just call me. You know I mean? You could call me if I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I just felt so connected to her at that point. You know, I was a college party boy at that point. And I felt like it was, I remember that day, like it was yesterday, you know? So I, I, um, and then, you know, I ended up having some crazy nights with her. You know, she, I would answer her calls. She'd call me and she's, I'm talking her off the ledge. Damn. So. We, uh, I wrote a song about it. It's called Past Gone. And, you know, listening back, you know, the musically, it's, it's amateur, but the, the, the notion of it is really, like, authentic. Yeah, it affected and a it, lot of it, people, uh, though, so I wouldn't call it amateur. Well, you know, I'm just saying the, the musicality saying of it now, as I listen yeah. back, it, yeah, yeah. cool. But um, the notion of it, it was spot on. And, 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 and it, like I said, the authenticity, people knew it was real. You know, and, and it's a really cool story because now, you know, I wrote that song, um, and she had this Tumblr. It's actually how like I came up. Her Tumblr was called Past Gone. Mm. And she's like, I'm already past gone. You know, I'm not even Damn. here. And and her whole damn, um, that's so intense. So I call gone. I called the song Past Gone, and Fuck. and uh, she ended up becoming like this like point of contact for a ton of kids who all over the country, you know, had listened to the music and wanted to know the real person. You know, and, and at first they, she wanted, like, there was an anonymity, like, with the song, I purposely, I fudged some of the, like, uh, different city. She didn't, she wasn't sure if she wanted it to be public at first. And now, you know, it became this thing where people were reaching out to her all over the country, and she realized that it really helped her. 
to talk to other people. Isn't that amazing? Big time. And they now connect, she's, right? she's, I just saw her two weeks ago. She's studying to be a psychiatrist. That's cool. And man. she's like a year from self harm. She hasn't self harmed herself in like a year, and she's That's she's incredible. doing incredible. So it's it's like one of those things where I feel like. You know, as much as the party boy and the persona and, and the brand it was cool, this was like a turning point for me as an artist and just as a as a personality that people really like, you know, I, I changed, it changed my, people looked at me a different way and it, it opened up a new avenue for me. And I, I, you know, a lot of my music, as much as it is, kind of you take a quick glance, it's pigeonholed into party music, but I think most of my true fan base is drawn to the other side. Agree, and and uh, you know maybe there's a there's, there's a well that, that's it's kind of gives you purpose. I think laughter and music are in many ways what we stay alive for. Yeah. You know I've had a lot of experiences coming off stage, a lot where I remember three years after 9/11, mm -hmm. you know this guy came up to me with tears in his eyes and he said, you, "This is the first time I see my sister laugh since she lost her husband in three years, that's three and a half years." Or or you, you know I remember I had the weirdest experience. I was in. Uh, I think it was uh, North Carolina and I did a show and a woman <laughs> very frail but young and she didn't look well and she, she goes, you're going to have to hold me up. She, she goes, you made me laugh so hard. I had terminal cancer. I don't have a lot of oh, time fuck. left. But the way she said it, she was not trying to not inconvenience me. She goes, I, and, and that doesn't matter. I know it's going to be, it sounds weird, but you made me laugh so hard and I feel so good right now. And I'm like, mm, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I didn't know so what to awesome. say. I deal with that. You deal with that. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing because, when, I, well, I don't know, maybe on a small scale, you matter. It makes a difference. Yeah. It makes a difference. You acknowledge him, give him a voice that's yeah. dope man let's go to current events with evan current like, events guy. With so evan, <laughs> evan used to have a gnar, gnarly ass beard and he was evan the beard forever it would have fit in he even with had our his own instagram account evan the beard and shit would have fit in with our gang these he's he's one of them but the rest you bearded see the show the, yeah, everyone's bearded, bearded up, up son all bearded up hey does the, does the one homeboy before we jump into this and if you don't watch the show you won't know what the fuck i'm talking about the one homeboy it just you gotta watch it, it says you like it. he'll love it i'll show I him will. out there you like it it says drake's guy is he ever like come on man yeah, well, Drake's guy. it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it was more of like a network thing. They, they wanted, uh, his, his, his entry into it. Like he wasn't ever on the, essentially he wasn't ever on the bill. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it just, it happened. just so happened, you know, right before we started filming, um, you know, I'm homies with a lot of the Blue Jays through yeah. Marcus and he's the Toronto guy, Drake. And they're very like, kind of, they're very like. I guess, you know, Drake's like, you could even just watch him on Instagram. He loves Toronto sports. And oh, yeah. so this guy, you know, Marcus is just hanging out with this guy who's, who's, you know, very close to Drake. And essentially, he just played some of the music and this dude's like, what, what is this? This is dope. So then he, you know, he's always in LA. So we just started linking up. We, we became very, you know, just friendly he with him. He seems right? cool. He's an awesome, hilarious yeah. guy. So like, we're already filming all the na paperwork's done, but he wants to come on the road and like, I know what the value he brings. He's a guy who uh, brings an undertone of credibility just because of his allegiance to Drake. But also, he was his he was on the road with Drake for five he's years, there, so he's yeah. been to all these cities. We're going so now on this tour, we're going to the best after parties. We're meeting. He's bringing in cool people, and it was like I knew the value he was bringing. Cool. I under, I explained it to the network. I'm like, he's going to be there. He should be a character, you know. And it was kind of a last minute thing, but they wanted to. You know, I feel like it for them. It was kind of necessary for them, but he he, he jokes at it. I like, bet he's like, "Come on, man, I got a yeah. fucking name." It's like Drake's guy. I'm not Drake's and then, guy. And then last one that it did uh, is Blue dead. What's Blue doing? Blue's alive and well. He's here. <laughs> uh, it's his best friend since childhood. So everyone has their role on the show. And then his best friend Blue's just. I mean, he just gets white girl wasted every night, and yeah. then just like he does. What would you say? You do, Blue. His uh. <laughs> He's an intangible guy. I call him. You can't fucking put it on paper, but everyone, you everyone would attest that he. For me, he's like a. He's he's who I started this with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when we first went on the road, I just this kid. He's a you visual. Know, now you know Blue. Get you're gonna geek to this. Initially. I had Blue be my tour manager for like the first like five things we did. Do, this you, guy, hate, like, do you hate success? I can't even read or write, barely. Um, but uh, do you ha did you not want to be famous? I was well. That shows. I was like, you had no well, idea at this point. I was just going and doing club. I would play like two shows at a club or some two songs at a club, and 
he didn't really didn't do much, and he was my best friend. So I'm like, yo, let's just go security. Have fun. Yeah, let's for sure. Go have fun. Yeah, he's like your boy. It's like security blanket. I didn't yeah. need security. I had no yeah. one knew who the fuck I was. No, no, I'm not saying so. security. I meant security for yourself, like personally, like but security for me, blanket. But like, for me, like he was the guy. You know, he's working construction, so he's like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna come. Hell so yeah. We started rocking and rolling, and but for me, he's like, he's he's a slice of home for me. You know, yeah. I keep. I keep him around. He he has this kind of intangible calm. It's a visual. Calm, it's a visual anchor. Calming like vibe. See him, he's and like he's in, in his mind frame. You know, he's a lot smarter than he than he'll come off. Like he's not smart on. You know, you listen. You sit and listen to him talk. But have a couple beers, sit and listen to him talk. He'll say some shit. He's like a Yogi Bear. He'll say some shit that's like what? Yeah. What did you just say, bro? He, he, and he doesn't even he know. He can't read, but it drops some knowledge on you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he, we call it's like blue, Floyd Mayweather. It's yeah, like yeah. blueisms. We just like blueisms. He, he just fucking says uh, he he's a guy that understands where I came from. But for me, it's like I get really wrapped up. I'm a thinker. I'm not really a true artist in the sense where I'm like he. As much as he's my tour manager and we're a collective, we make decisions. You know, I'm kind of a self manager as well. Sure. So. I'm always constantly as much as you know, they urge artists just to focus on being an artist I'm constantly thinking about the decision-making the business, business man. You gotta so be a business right man, and that's how and for me That's the only way it would have worked. So, you know for blue It's like having a guy there. That's if I get too caught up in these champagne problems I call them, you know, what I mean like and I'm like all wrapped up on, on things champagne problems Yeah, champagne I get wrapped up on yeah. things. I, I know hashtag champagne problems. Yeah. That might be a new shirt. Hey, son. hey, dude Hopefully, hope, hope you don't mind. Problems. We'll be stealing you that. can steal that Let's got, go to some current events, man. Yeah, that's a good one. Champagne problems. Like, I can't believe this is still, or this is today's biggest story in sports. We're back to this shit again. Um, the U.S. Uh, uh, appeals court denied Tom Brady's uh, request for a rehearing for Deflategate. So he's taking it. Free it's Brady. Almost, it's a foregone conclusion. Basically. It's over. No, he's, it's not over. Bullshit. He's saying the Supreme over. Court? He's taking it to the Supreme Court. Hey, Tom! Hell just yeah. give it up, brother. Here's like pro I know you guys from the East Coast. I love Tom Brady as much as you watch, guys. Do. Watch your next words. <laughs> watch your next words, sir. Yes. Choose your next words carefully. Yeah. Your next words. Uh, hey, man, it's four games. That it's kind of like just fucking take the four games and you, you're already. You probably go five hundred. You win two and two. You're still gonna win that, that shitty. Guy. Ass, you're that still guy. gonna win the shitty division. That guy. Let, wins. let homeboy get some reps in. He's too competitive. You talk about Tom Brady. Brady is too fucking competitive. Brady, like they, I remember when Artie he's Lang, taking two L's now. Artie Lang from described Artie Lang described Michael Jordan. He said he said the best way to describe Michael Jordan. He's so competitive. He said if Michael Jordan was on the Titanic, it would not have sunk. He would have been plugging holes. He would have been running That's around. Hilarious. And you could say the same thing about Tom Brady. That fucker's so competitive that it doesn't surprise me. That he's like, nope. Gonna win this. You guys Gonna are big. You no guys are big what. football fans. The whole crew. Yeah, I mean we're New England guys. Uh, we're really close with Edelman. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we. Uh, I have a funny story about Edelman. Almost got in a fist fight with him. Rock star. Oh, do you not like him? No. Uh, I might have to mend this fence. No, no, no. We're, oh, no, well, I haven't seen. Well, I don't know if I've seen him since. So I'm really close with Tim Tebow. And uh, Tim just went to the Patriots. We're out with a crew in L.A. And he didn't know I was close with Tim. And he starts talking shit about Tim. And I'm like, I don't know Edelman. At the time, Edelman's just a guy. I think mm. he was just getting on the team or he just mm. made the team. And so we're at, you know, we're at like bottle service. And he keeps talking shit about Tim. And I was like, all right, whatever, man. And then someone, my boy told him, was like, hey, yeah, that's like Brendan's brother, man. Like, careful what you say. And then he was like, fuck, you know, something like, fuck that, dude, blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, I don't know if I'd do th go that far. I wouldn't go that route with and this then he Started drink, no. And then he kept drinking. Not with the guy with the cauliflower and then, he, and then he kept going. And so then I got his face like, listen, my man. We can, we can go down this route if you want. I'm telling you, it's not going to end it's well. It's not going to end well. <laughs> like, I just had a conversation with him. But. Talk about a competitor. <laughs> that dude, that dude, uh, we'll probably get in trouble for this, but I'm going to say it. That dude's playing ping pong at our house. Like, we're big ping pong guys. If any of you guys want to come over and get worked, by feel the way, free. By the way, <laughs> by, by the way, by the way, I'm not hearing a peep out of you on the fucking... On, if you ping pong if you want to go down, like Dude, you don't want to see him in a fight, you don't want to come see us. You don't want to see my oh, you guys, slices. You, you don't want to see my topspin. <laughs> you guys so I'm coming over. Keeps. I'm coming over. Door, the door, yeah. I play for keeps. I play for keeps. Um, so, keeps. I, I, well, I take I mean, that's that a whole other fucking avenue we can go down. So, so we, we, I think we might have to live stream like a little ping pong. We got bro. I'm down. And by the way, when I hit my forehand, hey, yeah, I make noise. That's welcomed. My backhand slice. We encourage that. That's welcomed. We have like a little ping pong arena in our kitchen. Dude, I can't wait. We scrapped the dinner table idea and we just went ping pong. 
talented. <laughs> so Edelman plays. Edelman, keeps ping but, but I'm, we're talking about competitors. I mean, this guy's laying out, doused, drenched in sweat, laying out face first for ping pong balls <laughs> in the off season. And like, I'm a fan, man. I, I, I'm a, that stuff doesn't bother me at all. And Edelman, I have no hard feelings uh, Edelman, we'll just have to mend the fence because he's an he's an awesome guy, and he's, you know. It doesn't necessarily surprise me. He gets riled up, you know what I mean, when he, when he does. He gets riled up here. But he's a fiery motherfucker. I don't know what, you know, I don't know about all, kinda all that. Kind of have to be, right? At the mean, same time. He's a stud at his yeah. size. You have to yeah. be. He's a, he's a freak. Oh, there's no hard feelings yeah. at all. It's just a funny story. Yeah, so we're, we're Patriots guys, but... Back to Tom, man. We're we're also you guys, Barstool guys. You like? Stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We I was supposed to go on their uh, podcast. We're in New York, but mm -hmm. we just didn't have time. We're stoolies, so yeah. You know, we're 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 on the free Brady train. I pull half my current events from Barstool. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm balls guys, deep man. in Barstool. Yeah, man. good stuff. Ha hashtag forty nine. Don't know what it is. Nah, I never heard of it. Hashtag go. Literally going. Go fucking hit the bench. Like, right. Go hit the <laughs> shower. You, you fuck with it. You fuck yeah. with it. I don't know if he would. It's a. It's, it's it's. I read the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Everyone. Where where are you from? I, it's from New York. Yeah, yeah, so maybe it's it's very Boston. There's a there's a bar stool in New York City too. Right. But okay. it's it's the bar stool the originated, you know, that really popped off was bar stool Boston. So it's just a thing it's there. Like but one of the biggest sites. I mean, especially I haven't like met Brady. That's like one guy I want to meet. Is Tom, Brady. Tom Brady. I don't. I, I don't know. I bet I, he'd be as exciting as a sloth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm not sure if I'd be. I'm not sure if I'd walk out and be like. That was fucking awesome. No, you don't want to meet your heroes, my man. You really don't. You I mean, I bet, I bet Drake's great, but, but as far as athletes, if they're that good, they're usually not. And trust me when mm -hmm. I say, it, especially they're usually not a bowl of fun to hang out. Yeah. with. Mm -hmm. not a barrel of laughs. They're just not. The guys that we, the guys that gravitate towards us, um, are silly naturally. Dudes. Usually good dudes. I they're assume. just, they just. There's a reason they gravitate towards yeah. us. You know, yeah. so it, we find ourselves around those types of guys a lot more than like the. Yeah, yeah. You know. What else you got, Ev? I'm so it, sick of that, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm good on Deflate. When, when, when they life. were going through the Deflate game, it was almost coming to an end. I was on ES, I was hosting Sports Center, and I went, "All right, I'm not breaking down UFC. I want to talk Deflate Gate." And they're like, "Fuck, man!" So funny. <laughs> it was just they was so old, just, yeah, just over, constantly over, beating a dead over. horse. Over. Being think think about if you're a commentator on ESPN or Sports Center or Fox, like you have to cover it over, over. Yeah, kills you. Oh. What else you got, Ev? So, as of today, uh, Forbes announced that The Rock is the highest paid actor in the entire world. As well he should be! Yeah, we as are, well we he are, should be! We are in the room. $64.5 million dollars last year. We are in the room with the living biggest rock fan. You're John the biggest Kilmer. rock fan? Check it. Me too. Huge rock fan. I think he's a. I'm, always I'm, got, I'm Dwayne, always on got Dwayne on the brain. Always I'm going to go on the, on the record and say I've never enjoyed a rock movie ever. Uh, the Rundown. The Rundown's a great. Uh, is, Did I see the Rundown? The Rundown. Scott Peter Berg. Scott Patrick. Peter, 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 what's yep. That's Sean uh, William Scott. Yep. Scott. Scott. I, I didn't Peter see the Berg movie. It is. It's what made him a star. It is a great movie. And oh no, hilarious. I got another one for you. Be cool. He plays a gay guy. It's brilliant. It's his best role. Listen, I love The Rock. Painting Gain's amazing. Didn't see Painting Gain, I'm with you on this, brother. Dude, I'm the biggest rock fan as well. I, I'm getting a little sick of him, though. He's doing the same movie over and over. I was just going to say. And I, he's like, I'm like, all right. Bro. I hate him as an actor, and I love him as a guy, though. Yeah, that's I think if, if you hate on The Rock, you're an asshole. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't. Guy's awesome. So yeah. what the fuck he, he, say here? even ISIS is like yeah he's he cool. just reverse course <laughs> no 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 he's no he's a I I don't enjoy like that's just a personal thing yeah, I, I don't know, enjoy yeah, yeah. his movies I don't really like, you like I don't connect to him as an actor completely yeah. fuck no but Fast just, and Furious Nine does nothing for also, me also like just like I, just to put this out, I'm not even a Fast and Furious guy period like I, those, I don't like that genre movies. of like the unbelievable shit like, preach son. it's not yeah, my thing yeah, you know did you see him in Hercules give me my fucking money back <laughs> didn't see it i'm glad i didn't give see me it. my fucking money he looks good with long hair though and he is i wonder if he's taking anything uh mm. oh no him uh. and brock lesnar all natural next all next, right. one. next. <laughs> yeah yeah and you a ever lot, see his a lot cheat of days? protein powder you see his cheat what days on cheat instagram days like fucking... it's like fucking boxes of pizza hut and cookies and he's like one day to cheat i'm like bitch please bitch please bitch, what else bitch. you got all right, last one. I'm a got. huge rock fan, though, not hating. Last one we got today, a uh, a former U.S. intelligence director um, that used to run all of the uh, the ISIS intelligence relations and all that kind of shit, um, came out and revealed that from all the laptops that they were that they managed to seize from ISIS strongholds, 
he would wager that probably 80% of the content on porn, those laptops. Porn. Porn. Hey, porn. What, 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 wait, wait, hold on. Yes. What kind of porn? Oh, I mean, it doesn't specifically say. Well, wait. fuck. Probably sakes. some. That's crazy a big deal. Question, dude. That's a good It's question. a brilliant question because there's a Persian girl who's destroying the uh, porn game right now. I forget her name. Mia Khalifa. Mia what? Khalifa. Boom. Preach, What's her son? name? What's her name? Mia Khalifa. She's from Cleveland? Cleveland? Check her out. Well, well, she's brilliant, cause, 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 and uh, they're so <laughs> upset at her. Mm. The, like you know, the Muslims are very upset because because she in, has a set of Arab titties from really? the heavens. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, first of all, Persian people are not Arab, so let's get that straight. But I well, no, no, it. I don't know if she's Persian either. Oh, I, I can't tell. She's got some tits, huh? She has some fucking Osama bin Laden tits. By that he means bombs. But bombs. She's dropping bombs. ISIS style. Good little system on her. Yeah. Well, um, the in Afghanistan, Afghanistan, where I went little stand-up they have these satellite Actually, dishes is, you, I know. you did stand-up there yeah that's legendary like did, nine years ago i know i know they did he was like i destroyed that room I'm i like, destroyed in the, middle of the war. military no they, but they had uh, uh, satellite dishes and they all all of them are watching crazy amounts of porn how would you not how would you but this this not? isis intelligence i mean hey, for sure drop more fucking knowledge i need details are they watching girl on girl are they watching black on white i'd are love to know what kind the fat the you know what i'm saying they're should, watching game these, bangs these are Bukaki. things we can only speculate are, they, say, are they watching the weird asian porn bukkake on the probably face? not when you're a dude and you haven't been exposed to a lot of sex just seeing naked girls is like holy fucking shit it's only when you become a connoisseur of porn that you need to keep up in the ante and then you find your niche yeah you find yeah, your yeah yeah because most of i can't personally then you I, find your favorite i can't just watch regular porn it's a part, like, I feel whatever like that's, that's a part of every guy's like manhood is like finding out your niche in porn and what, what it's going to be well they've and, done and then some... deciding if it's weird, too weird you're like judging yourself like oh ah. dude boys boys but, now. But, the, but then when you not it keeps going like ugh. What the fuck was I doing? Yeah, get, get me out of here. Get me oh out. God. Get me out. Or you're sexing with a girl. Like, too much. Too much. As soon as I'm not, I'm like, no, no, no. no. Oh, God. No. no. Hey. Uh, erase. Oh my erase. God. You're disgusting. You're How dis- dare you? Filthy animal. Oh, I have to. Day later, I'm like, hey, what were you talking about? I'm yeah, taking an weird. imaginary shower right now. Yeah. That's very good. Well, that got weird. I'm sorry, Mike. That's all right. Is that it, Ev? That's it, my man. All right. God damn it. We have a little segment called Dropping Knowledge. I'm going to make it quick and funny. He's going to read a chapter from Moby Dick. That's now. right, ladies and Everyone gentlemen. prepare yourself. And now, Moby Dick, everyone. Um, uh, the, uh, the square root of, uh, you know, I, I'm going to ask a question. It's a trivia question. So when you are in a room, they have a group of people in a room, uh, do you think they eat more? Or less when they play one one room had loud fast music with a lot of light in it. Oh, I'm gonna panic and eat real a fast. A lot of light in it, and the other room had slow music. Are there drugs involved? And a little darkness. Do you eat more with more light? Do you eat more with less light? When you have time, when you have time, you, you can take your time. Up. Like when there's, I do know the answer, but so one area is more, just more, more relaxed, more laid back. Dark. And the other area is like, yeah, it's like Upbeat. pleasant, pleasant lighting. You got some jazz playing. Then the other one is a little bit more like, and the light, and the windows are open, then there's light. Do people yeah, eat, do eat people eat more or less? Mike, you get answer first. I'm deep in thought. Mm-hmm. Um... Mm-hmm. I think, I think the fact that if it's well lit, uh, it, what, it also can I can I get a little specification yes, before sir. I give my answer? Yes, what kind of meal are they um, dropping? He's a thinker. Are we are we in a room with people we know, with friends? Are we just a group of random people? But it's a buffet. Group of random people in a, a buffet. buffet. I feel like you're eating so less. Do you think, you're so eating, that, actually, let me get more specific. Do so they with have a group of people, crab legs. do you think there are more pounds eaten, more are more pounds of food eaten in the well lit room with faster music? Or are more pounds of food eaten in the yes in the in the Mike in the room that's a little bit more same amount of people one's with, dark with one's jazz. light I'm, one's going, I'm going less slow. light and my reasoning is I think people eat oh, fuck I don't know I, I'd say I'm gonna go less light but I don't I'm not even sure what my reason so in is. less light they eat more pounds they eat more because I feel like when it's well lit and like people are like aware, you're looking at people. You might you might be a little more skittish to really pile on for judgment. Doubles, yeah, preach. I'm a especially if you're talking dude. about strangers and like I don't know. You mm. know what I mean? I, f- I feel like if the vibe is dope and it's comfortable, mm. and then, then you know I'm going nuts on that ribeye. You're not really like worried who's looking. You know what I mean? It's it's a better vibe for that. You're I'm, go I'm after with it. Mike. On the, I'm going you're with s- Mike. Slow and dark. I'm going ham on some food. You're going ham on some food. Oh, harsh. You're both wrong. 
You know what? And I and I felt I felt like that was a little me, bit. It was a little bit. On, it was a little bit more obvious that way. So I feel. Well, like, here's why. It's really because your answer, in a way, is right. You're can gonna, you're gonna guess why? Yeah. Go? yeah. Because when it's high paced, you're just like da 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 da, right? Uh -huh. Just like fucking uh -huh. go. Uh huh. Yeah. And your body produces leptin. Leptin is a hormone that lets your body know that you're full. But when you're eating slowly, because the music is there, what happens oh, yeah. is your body has time to produce the leptin and get that signal to your brain. So your body goes, hey, we're getting full. So in a room full of people, they ate 61 pounds of food versus 95 pounds Jesus. of food. Jesus. So there's a huge difference. So why so aren't steakhouses, are, why aren't it fucking bright as shit with fucking techno? Because, Fiesto playing. Because, they Maybe we're spend, something because then they give you more food. Start a restaurant. Because then they have to provide you with more food. Mike and B steaks. More business. It's more food. No, because then you'll spend more on food. But in this case, you have people who kind of hang out. They get fast, Drinks. Pillar, faster. And then you can turn the tables over again. <gasps> At least that would be the theory. But the bottom line is, I was surprised to see that too. That, that is interesting. That, yeah, that you, I have a theory so if about. If you want to lose weight, maybe uh, maybe bring draw the shit. I have a theory down. that's tied to this, and I can't tell if it's too stereotypical to say out loud, but I'm going to say it. I feel comfort. This feels like a safe nest. You're, are we in the, you're in the circle of trust. You're, can circle I be honest? Trust. You're very safe right we're now. In the, we're in the dude, circle of trust. Dude, listen, trust. listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. You're very safe right yeah. now. You're safe. No one's listening. Um, Hashtag three and a half million. I have a theory. I have a theory. I'm not sure if it's completely original, but to me it is because I, I didn't read it anywhere. But I have a theory why Asians are so skinny. Oh, I like this. All right, I'd love and to hear And it's tied this. to that thought that you just said about eating slow and that, you know, the facts, the science. Yeah. Um, they eat with chopsticks. That's right. This is some bro science. And by the way, that is, that's not bro science. That's actually very true. It's the only culture so that eats with chopsticks. And, chopsticks and per, allow you more time and they let your body know that if you got you're a, If you got a, if you could grab a pizza... Or you could grab a big sandwich and you just fries and you just it's finger mm -hmm. food and you're just going. If you're eating chop with chopsticks, you have, simply can't eat fast. No, have you ever seen an Asian man with a bowl of noodles with chopsticks? They go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they down a ramen noodle fast. I mean, they deep throat those. Noodles but they're eating fast. fucking. They're eating fucking noodles, bro. Like you know what I mean? Fast they're, as fuck though. Yeah, and it produces and a lot sushi, of insulin in your body. Douche, douche, efficient. Boom, but douche, boom. but douche. <laughs> I mean, it could be a. Chaya, 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 chaya. I am not going to enter this conversation. You, sir, he brought it up. both of you should be ashamed of yourselves for being stereotypical. <laughs> and I want to apologize to the Asian community and our Asian fans because this is ridiculous. I, I apologize to the Asian listeners. Um, you do. It's probably we have so it, many. I like it, when we say Asian too. Asia is Russia. Asia is. It's such we're a giant area all of, of the world. What's the politically correct way of saying? It? Well, you know, the politically incorrect was always the Orient, or so Orientals was always. But you know. Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, pretty fucking radically different cultures. You know what the fuck we <laughs> mean. Oh, they call like Rish. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm you got fan <laughs> questions, Kay? God damn you it. got them, Evan? Oh, fuck your it. history. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna stick with Asians. Yeah, me too, Asians. And Rikorish. There's no Russian guys like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. yeah. But, White as fuck in the snow. Rikorish, Rikorish is a Japanese only. Oh, they call Rish. Yeah, well, that would be a Japanese. <laughs> a little Rish. It's Japanese. whatever you want to make it, man. Do you ever see Chris D'Elia do uh, an, an older Asian man no. talk, uh, a ch Japanese man? Yeah, no, Chris D'Elia. Like that's a boy. And he just says, Oh, he's fucking hilarious. Go ahead, Ev. Did you roll? Yeah. All right, first fan question. Uh, Mike, who's your favorite rapper of the 90s era, and who's your favorite current rapper? Can we call Biggie? Uh, I'd say Jay-Z. Jay-Z, like, I, if I pick people ask, like, my all-time favorite rapper, I'd say Jay-Z. <laughs> but a lot of it is because I, I, I love his, I love what he's done with his brand and as a business person. I just want them to be a great rapper. Brilliant. And, but look at the guy. I'm like, you know, I, I think it's probably – partially because of my background and, and how I operate and I, I'm obviously I'm drawn to the business side of it as well so I really I'm drawn to I like Jay-Z a lot but you know Jay-Z Biggie in the 90s man like this is where I differ from like a lot of rappers or musicians like when I was young I wasn't listening to music like oh I'm gonna make music like that guy one day I, like that inspired me to make music I was listening to music as an athlete you know like, like, like you do jocks. like you know, to work out or you know but at the at the park or whatever um but I was never like really like super influenced as I grew up by musicians because it was never in my mind that makes sense it was never like something I ever saw myself doing so it wasn't it wasn't like really how I listened Mm. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, what is the creative process you do to make your raps? 
Yeah, it's that is interesting. It's an interesting. That's a cool question because the timing wise, I'm, I'm going through a evolution in that. I'm, I, I'm most most of these days projects originated off freestyles. So I'll go in and, you know, my producer will will I have a little you know something in my head and we'll start a little even just a guitar or piano riff, something we like like a loop. There's no drums, nothing, and I'll just go in and I'll just I'll do melodies. I'll do free you know some of the lyric will stay for sure, but um, you know this has been it wasn't how I started. I used to sit out there and write. Yeah, you know, be writing and and for me I realized that like you know create as an artist and as you grow you want to start carving out like what you sound like, you know what I mean? And, and like, what's your, what's your sound. And for me going in there and freestyling and not having anything written, not having anything planned. It's the only way I get like truly original approaches, like how me, how I would do it. You That's know what I mean? Cool. And, and I, you know, it's actually been like a big step forward for me. Cause I, you know, I go in and freestyle, I'll go in for sometimes 10, 15 minutes and 15 minutes, could be maybe 40 seconds of cool stuff in there. Yeah. But you go back and you listen, Chop like, ooh, this is cool. Yeah. You take that, and then even if I'm just humming or saying gibberish, I'll then write to those. We know that the melody feels good, so it feels good on the record. You know what I mean? It feels good on the music, so now it's about what I say. But that has been like a big step forward for me. It's mm. dope, man. All right, next part. Uh, what are the, some of the best and worst parts of touring? Uh, well, the best are like obvious, you know, the best is, uh, getting on stage and playing the shows and seeing people like our shows are, you guys gotta come because it's, we'll you know, that's why, that's why we, one? we just played here. We played at the Elray. Son of it's going to be a little bitch. while, but, um, was a good theater. Edelman was there. Could have, we, we could have mended that fence. Did we do the Elray? No, we did a uh, comedy store. Okay. Yeah, we, we were going to do the Elray. Elray is like a, I don't know. Do they do others? They do yeah, non-music. We were going to do a live podcast. And it, we chose oh, to right. come. Yeah. It's a dope vibe going. there because it's like yeah, chandelier. I've seen shows there. I like it there. Yeah. We're doing a show. Um, the next show Great we have theater. here is Oxnard. You guys should come to that. We're it's definitely not that coming. Yeah. Yeah, 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 come We've been out to Oxnard. It'd be fun. Where do you guys live in LA? We live right in West Hollywood. We're, we're yeah, we've been here for about a year and a half. Um, so back to the, but the worst and best touring. Yeah. The best is like the obvious, you know, like, we we really i don't we work our ass off but we kind of treat tour like celebration you know what i mean like we're you know i'll go play the show and it is business and it's like really where i make most of my income so it's obviously very important i think that's why the tv show is cool because you're seeing like us want to party our ass off but also run the business properly um but you know meeting people and you know when i was single yeah there's a lot of obvious yeah, a, little a lot bit. of obvious perks to that there were some, some perks um but uh the worst is is the is just the grind. People don't understand how fucking gnarly it is, man. Like that you, tour bus. You're, you're living with a bunch of hooligans in, in a very confined place, and um, we really, truly are partying our fucking dick off. You know and what I mean? Get so, on the bus and go into the next. So town. You, you just wake up. We call it a bubble. Like you, you know, everything's changing around you. You're constantly moving, but we live in this bubble, like a traveling bubble. And yeah. you wake up and you do it again. It becomes very monotonous and becomes. Without the adrenaline of stage and shit, I don't know how our livers hold up, but we, but we do. You know what I mean? We just go after it. We don't, you know what I mean? Like, there's, I, you don't even, like, I don't not party when the show's, like, not big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we still go out and party. Like, when you, you come to it, it's not, it's like a, a music show you've never seen before. Like, we, it is, you know, people are there for the music. They're screaming every fucking lyric back, but they're also there for that, like, we're going to, chug five beers on yeah. stage i'm gonna bring you up we're gonna drink vodka together yep. you guys are all getting fucked up we're all getting fucked up and it's that like feels like a house party you know what i mean so that's a lot yeah it's a lot you know and it gets you it's know my mom party. like that's I'm one thing fun, though. I'm a we delicate. should try it on our next show whoa yeah fuck blow you? and i just i ruin everything uh, beer okay fuck beer i'm just yeah, snoring. I don't get watch your tits my, out watch my heart stop you fucks i can't get it up <laughs> i don't know if the yeah, coca- i don't know if the cocaine I'm old work. pure blow needles for no reason needles <laughs> Nothing. Woo! You fucks. Let's get hair high. Let's fucking heroin and blow together. Yeah, we, we keep it to liquor. Confuse that your central sense. nervous system until you explode. You fucks. Beer, Come on. beer and marijuana. Sorry. You know. All right. Never mind. Legal right, oh, stuff. Okay. Whatever you square. Last question. Last question. <laughs> You're making me sound like a pussy up here. Sorry, talking about sorry. needles. No, you want to. You want to stick your finger in the gauge. You might get bit. <laughs> get ahead. Get ahead with the with the last question. Last one. For Mike Stud. What are your thoughts on this year's double XL freshman class? And out of all the guys. In it, who would you most want to collaborate with? I thought it was good. I mean, I it's a uh, 
Double XL is, you know, it's it's like one of those things that it's a staple in like the hip hop community. It's it's important. People, you know, it's it truly hasn't really like lost any of its with with uh, you know how the internet's become a lot of the industry a lot, a lot of things that used to be cool and like mainstays in in the hip hop community their their punch is is less you know what i mean it's like not as important because so many there's just so many platforms like and so the source many, you could go find music anywhere you yeah. know what i mean but this double xl thing is just kind of they choose uh you know the best what what is it 10 i think they picked 10 of their picks for like who's next who you know who's moving the sound forward and it's very urban and this year I, I felt and it's kind of that new wave of it's club music you know I mean it's it's a lot of it's southern inspired but it's it's very like you know big drums very yeah. a little less lyrical you know what I mean and that's kind of where hip hop's gone because it's no like I said before hip hop is now pop, pop music and pop music is pop music because it's simplified to be catchy for a mass oh, for the masses yeah. so lyrics and like all this stuff that's thought provoking and making you listen to every lyric it's not like the average guy driving to his job isn't trying to dial into what the fuck all these things you're saying that they want it to be catchy and that's so it's kind of merged like what hip-hop is it's kind of become this more catchy melodic phase and that's and the double xl uh choices this year reflects that but i would choose uh lil dicky have you got you guys aware of him yeah very aware Little Dicky and Mike Studd sounds like a gay porn, so I don't know if we should. <laughs> Little Dicky, Little Dicky and Mike, Mike Studd. <laughs> Little appearance guys, with Big Brown. These guys mean business. Uh oh, sweat. who's in the closet? Come on who's down. out of the closet? Come on down Big to the Brown. Come on down to the LRA and see Little Dicky and Mike Studd. <laughs> and who's the old guy in the corner masturbating and videotaping this whole thing? <laughs> he's high on blow. But, but Little, Little Dicky's killing it, and he, he's a good guy because on social media, especially when you see him on World Star, the videos he's doing with you know he did with Von Miller and all these guys, he's kind of branching out then you yeah. see him in commercials on Carl's Jr. Yeah, yeah. He, he's like he's, a, he's stuff a, out of his box. He's now. like a parody rapper but is also an awesome he's a good rapper. Very very good rapper. So he like it, it works because he's not we go back to the authenticity. Yeah. He's just being himself and it's like it's kind know, of a goofy. Even like, like goofy. people who don't mm -hmm. relate to him at all like the urban markets they just fuck with him. You know what I mean? But I fuck with him. I brought him over and waxed his ass in ping pong too. Really? And he's hey all state, he's all state tennis player and came in. Yeah, like, but dude, I know you're a good athlete, but you see, when I hear this, I start my hand, I start. I Brian, just start, take, Brian takes tennis you're lessons you're in Calabasas. Dude, I do a lot. Am I a slice guy? I'm an everything guy, dude. I'm. I got a whole don't, don't, fucking don't, country don't of possibilities. Get him I'm an everything guy too. Are you? This guy right here is an everything guy too. Really? We got, we got with a good the little, mitts with the big mitts. Good little system, dude. Can I tell? Can I tell you guys something? I work angles. Is that cool? Can yeah. I work angles? Absolutely. Yeah? It's all angles. But oh, yeah. Okay, cool. That's, I'm just asking. Look, um, well, that's it, awesome. brother. We appreciate you coming on, Mike man. Like Studd. I said, I've been a and fan for a while. People are gonna, our fans are going to love you, you man. Bro. You, uh, They can find you uh, at Mike underscore stud on yeah, Instagram yeah, on, and Twitter. On Twitter and Instagram, it's Mike underscore stud. And, uh, TV show on Esquire Tuesday nights. Check it out. I know most of you guys who, who don't know me were probably like, I'd never fucking watch that. But it really will now. Should. E even if you don't in, like, if you don't like the genre of hip hop, I'm telling you, can't yeah. relate to it. it's you, not about you, don't, that. It, you really don't even need to give one fuck about me or music technically. No. Like I have a, it's not as much as my name's in the title and it's about what you know the career. It's not. It's no. about it's about the cast and it's about the, the dynamics the we have. Characters is good, man. Yeah. Uh, is that and then you, not, no no tour dates coming up, right? Um. Yes, I am. I'll, I'll be announcing a tour. We'll be announcing a tour in like a week. And you can get on your social media. I'm yeah, sure. uh, my website is just www.mikestud.com, and that's. But really, like, if you follow me on any of the, they're all synonymous. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post the dates Word. and you'll see it. So appreciate you coming on, man. You, you guys are awesome. Here. I appreciate Love you guys. You guys Do the Phoenix the thing, guys. Come see us in Phoenix. Uh, at Phoenix Live, July 29th and 30th. Both shows almost sold out. TFATK.com. San Francisco, Punchline. I'll be there uh, August 18, 19, 20. That's a long ways away. This is the Fire and Kid. We're out. <laughs>